Internet Radio and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. globe and broadcasting to you live from the studios of LA Talk Live in beautiful, sunny Los Angeles, California. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another live episode of the one and only show that gets to the very root of the medical cannabis movement. This is The Marijuologist. As always, yours truly, Richard Carr on the mic, joined by my esteemed colleague, E. Quarter Wolf, who right now is in the green room preparing for tonight's show, working with wardrobe as he always does. We've got the women of cannabis joining us tonight. These are business women who've been here before, in fact. They're not newbies. They're not on camera yet either, but they're not newbies. They've actually been here before. Our returning champion, L. Whitney Beatty, joins us, and uh, one of our new best friends and another returning champion, Jana Johnson, returns as well. So we're going to be talking about women in the cannabis industry, in the business side of cannabis all night long so be sure to stay tuned share the link all you got to do is go to latalklive.com takes you right to americatalklive.com and there we are in live and living color so stay tuned as we always do we want to take a moment out and recognize our good friends and esteemed colleagues over at law enforcement action partnership their website is leap.cc special thanks to nick bucci retired new jersey state trooper lieutenant nick bucci joined us last week Hope you tuned in again this week, Nick, and I want to also send a special thanks out to Roshan, who put that all together for us. So, stay tuned. More from the Marijuologist, another live show, but a little message from Lee to get us started. Let's do that right now, all right? police officers got together to talk about the war on drugs and its impact on their fellow officers. Over the next three years, this group of five swelled to 500 as current and former DEA agents, police chiefs, judges and prosecutors joined their ranks. Now they've gone public and what they're saying is shaking the drug war establishment to its roots. I think one of the things that I need to confront with, with respect to my own behavior is that even though for many years I have believed that this drug war is not just nonsense, but harmful, financially and, 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 and psychically and spiritually. It's just an immoral uh, proposition. I should have been saying much more of that, much more strenuously. When I joined New Jersey State Police in 1964, we had 1,700 troopers. We had a, a seven-man narcotic unit. Always seemed perfectly adequate for the job we needed to do. And then overnight, as a result of these bills of Mr. Nixon's, we went from a seven-man unit to a 76-person narcotic bureau. Well, what they decided to do was they took undercover people like myself, and they targeted us against small friendship groups, groups of young people in college, like yourselves. And as soon as we got in there and became their friends, come a Friday night, Somebody would say, hey, school's out, we're off work, anyone want to get high? And of course, if nobody said that, that was our job. If somebody simply passed a marijuana cigarette, to me, they became a drug dealer. That hand-held marijuana cigarette would send that person to jail for seven years. Over a thousand young people went to jail as a direct result of what I did out there as one undercover agent, something that I'm certainly not proud of today. When I was a police officer in 1966, I used to enjoy kicking in doors and, and going after, uh, you know, a half a baggie of marijuana or a seed even for that matter. It was a felony. 
Uh, we were told in the academy that that was a big pinch. It was really important to collect those numbers, and I did it. I did it with zeal. I did it with a lot of vigor. But after about 14 months on the job, having had uh, uh, a principal prosecutor slap me upside the head and question my understanding of the Constitution, uh, I began to understand that the 17 or the 19-year-old kid I had in the backseat of my police car was not a criminal at all. I'm a retired police captain. I spent 20 years in law enforcement working for the town of Tonawanda Police Department. Now, the only way this war on drugs is going to be won is if we make drugs go away. we got to win the war. The enemy's got to be gone. We're making a war on drugs. Drugs are the enemy. we got to make them go away. Show of hands, how many people in this room believe we can do anything to make drugs go away? No more heroin, no more crack cocaine, no more marijuana. Drugs are gone, let's move on to the next problem. Okay, so we can't make these drugs go away, so this war on drugs really isn't a good title. It makes us feel good, we're going to win the war, but it really doesn't describe the policy. I got another word that describes the policy perfectly. Prohibition. How many people got a picture for big black car, Chicago, Al Capone, and Thompson submachine gun in it? Anybody? How many other thought when you hear that word, that doesn't work? Isn't that what we learned in this country between 1920 and 1933? Prohibition doesn't work. That's why we ended it. Well, that is a description of the policy that we live under today in America when it comes to drugs. Under prohibition, we have given the right uh, uh, to the criminal of who's going to supply the drugs to the United States, what kind of drugs are going to be supplied, how much those drugs are going to cost, how they're going to be produced, how potent they're going to be, what age levels they're going to sell to, and where they're going to sell. And if they decide they're going to sell to 10-year-old kids on our playgrounds, by God, that's where they'll be sold. The thing that gets me is we don't learn a thing from history. We, we want our institutions to be pure and not corrupt, but yet we do the things that we know is going to corrupt them. And the way I like to tell the story is now you came into this thing a bright-eyed, shiny young recruit, you're a police officer four or five years, you see the, 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 the wasted energy that you spent on this drug war, and now you're standing in a motel room where the drug arrest had just been made, laying on the bed is a hundred and some thousand dollars, hasn't been counted yet in cash. In your back pocket is a $3,800 bill from the plumber that you didn't know how you were going to pay, and it doesn't make any difference anyways. And you take your first taste, and then you're gone. After I retired from the New Jersey State Police, I co helped co-found this group called LEAP, or Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. It's a group that was created to give voice to all the current and former members of law enforcement who feel the war on drugs is not only a dismal failure, but it's a terribly destructive policy. Uh, I remember just going in, taking a small area of my community, and for all practical purposes, cordoning it off, uh, completely cleaning it up, using some pretty sophisticated techniques, uh, trampling all over the edges of the Constitution to do so. But I mean, really cleaning it up and getting all of the dope that was out of there. And to my dismay, 90 days later, uh, I had had a Haitian group to move in from downstate. Uh, I had the Miami boys to move in from Jacksonville. And they were shooting machine guns and beating people mercilessly. And, and I wanted my old dope to be was back. <laughs> we didn't have an illegal drug in this country until 1914, when we passed the Harrison Anti-Drug Act. Just before 1914, the government said, we have 1.3% of the people in this country addicted to drugs. God, we can't, we can't have that, right? So they passed this law. Now you fast forward 56 years to 1970, the beginning of the war on drugs. In 1970, the government said 1.3% of the population is addicted to drugs. Can't have it. Got to start a war on drugs. 36 years later and a trillion dollars and all these lives lost, 1.3% of the population is addicted to drugs. Have you ever woke up in the morning, turn on your TV set, and you see this wonderful picture on your TV? There'll be a big, long table. On one end of the table, there'll be a big pile of money. 
On the other end of the table, a big pile of guns and drugs. And out in front of the table, there will be a district attorney. And he'll relate to you about the two-year investigation that culminated last night when we went out with 68 warrants. Have you seen that story? More than once? Yeah, a whole bunch of times. Huh? And you're going to keep seeing it, too, over and over again. Let me give you an example. These three people here are my gang. I'm the drug kingpin. Okay? They're one of my, these three are running my street crew for me. They're taking care of business out there. I'm collecting the bucks. Things are fine. I know what all the bling bling. They're basically paying rent with the money they make. But hey, life's like that. All of a sudden, I get slammed with that 25 year of life. I'm out of the picture. Now, how do these three wonderful people figure out who takes it over? Well, you get your attorneys, you get your attorneys, you get your attorneys. You get the contracts together, right? You look them over and you see, right? Is that how it works? No. You get your people, you get your people, you get your people, and you fight it out on the streets. And here's the kicker. When the violence stops, when the shootings stop, you know what we know then? One of these people is the charge now. And you know what we start doing? The two-year investigation. So in two years, we can have that wonderful television program with the big pile of guns, the big pile of drugs, the big pile of money. We can do it all over again. But you know what never changes? The availability of the drugs on the street. My name is Minch Lewis. I was city auditor in the city of Syracuse, New York. And at the end of my uh, term, one of the last things that we, we did was a review of the cost of police services in the city. And that led us to discover that most of the money that the city spent for police services was related to uh, drug-related arrests. You arrest a rapist, the rape stop. You arrest a bank robber, the bank robbery stop. What have you ever seen stop when you arrest a drug dealer or a drug user? Nothing. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. And the question really was, is that effective? Is that, is that doing anything? Is that, is that giving people any greater feeling of security uh, when we're spending approximately, uh, you know, ten million dollars a year to, to make these arrests. And the answer that we found after talking to people was no, this is not providing additional security. This is not giving them any greater feeling of belonging or, or security in their neighborhood. And if it isn't, then there must be a better alternative. Remove the profit motive. If you remove the profit motive, you can do away with almost all these problems. And how do you do that? Simple. You end prohibition, which can only mean one thing. Legalize drugs. Legalize all drugs. Legalize them so that we can control them and regulate them and keep them out of the hands of our children. Drug legalization is not to be construed as an approach to our drug problem. Drug legalization is about our crime and violence problem. Once we legalize drugs, we got to then buckle down and start dealing with our drug problem. And that's not going to be easy, but it's something we can do. 50% of the adult cigarette smokers in this society have quit in the last 10 years. That's an amazing success story when you're talking about the most addictive drug we know of, nicotine. It's an amazing success story. How did we accomplish this wonderful success story? We educated. Really got the word out there to people about how dangerous this substance was. Let me tell you about the outcomes of uh, legalization. First outcome is that 1.6 million less people would have to be arrested here every year, right? Which means something very important monetarily to everyone in this room, everyone in this state, which is in deficit spending, like all the other states, everyone in this country, because this is what we spend every year to fight this war. $69 billion down the rat hole. Useless. If we really want to improve our urban neighborhoods, the most important thing that we could do, the single most important thing that we could do, is end the war on drugs. South Africa in 1993, under apartheid, they incarcerated 851 black males per 100,000. In the United States in 2004, under prohibition, we incarcerate at the rate of 4,919 
black males for 100,000. Now, how anybody could look at this and not see institutionalized racism, I don't know. I think the drug war has been arguably the uh, single most devastating, dysfunctional, harmful social policy since slavery. I think it has devastated our communities. I think it has ruined the lives of so many of our fellow citizens. I believe that it has cost the national, the state, and the local treasury uh, obscene amounts of money, and for what? Come in, doctor. Man, I got to go. I'm working. I'm, I'm here, working. Doctor. I'm working. Doctor. This is the mayor talking. All right, all right. Doctor. Come on, what? What? Always do the right thing. That's it? That's it. I got it. I'm gone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's live episode of The Marowologist, the world's only show that explores the social, political, medical, economical, and ecological impact of cannabis on America and the entire globe. I am your humble host, Richard Carr, joined by my esteemed colleague, as always, E. Cor the Wolf. You might know him from such shows as The Wolf Den. First Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific, right here on the World Leader in Internet Broadcast. We've got some live guests joining us in the studio, and I'm about to pull them on the uh, sure. on the on the air. And uh, once we get them all figured out, um, we'll bring them on. They're, they're live and in, in living color here in our studio. We're just making some adjustments here. Well, that's the end of that. So, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rich Carr, uh, joined once again by my esteemed colleague, Ecor the Wolf. Oh. Yep, let them have it. Tonight we've got some very special guests. We've got some women in, in the power industry. Hi. These women are powerful in power. black women <laughs> right. who are doing it for themselves black in this rock. incredible oh, industry thanks. that we know as the cannabis black industry. Women. I call it yes. an industry. Yes, I do, because I think it is. Yeah. This is industrial level economics, industrial level research industrial level medicine so the commerce alone the money that's made we talked last week about all the money that's been being made in states like colorado the hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenue man this is big money big business mm -hmm. big business industrial strength and industrial level so we've got some ladies who are big business ladies in this industry if if i could say that <laughs> um, they both are returning champions. I'd like to welcome them both to the microphone, and I'm going to let you ladies do the introduction. So let me give you a rousing round of applause <laughs> for taking time out tonight to join us here on The Marowologist, live in the studio. I understand we might even have some mystery guests popping through. <laughs> that, that, that could be true, right? That could right. be true. All right. So anyway, welcome you both back. I'll start uh, with you uh, on, my on my right. Uh, introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about yourself. You are the lovely who? My name is Whitney Beatty, and I am founder and CEO of Apothecary. Uh, so if you keep your wine in a wine fridge, you keep your liquor in a bar, you keep your cigars in a humidor, why on earth are you keeping high in cannabis and shoebox under your bed? We <laughs> offer the wrong beautiful place, right? storage solutions for cannabis connoisseurs. I'm so happy to be here. Yep. We're happy to have you back. Always. <laughs> Rain and champ. And, and let us not uh, let us not forget to acknowledge how on the move you are. You've yes, got, I've been checking out on social media. She has always got a mic in her like hand in front of all kind of like somewhere. you know like like desperate housewife looking women and shit. You know what I'm saying? She out there like exposing her gang to these desperate housewives out there. I'm like, look at that. Over there. Out there We're still your lane type women out there. I am encouraging everybody to come into this space and take your space your place in this cannabis industry. You Get say, some. This it's real. It is it's going real. to be a fifty billion dollar industry by twenty twenty six. They, 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 they are the receiving. 
receiving I, you well. They're receiving you well out there too. I've been just really blessed to meet really good people and be able to share my experiences and really encourage them to not sleep on this opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, and I love to talk to women and I love to talk to people of color. You know, our communities Rush. have been disenfranchised yes. by this um, war on drugs, and now there's this opportunity to that is opened up, and we need to make sure that we are out there taking our place mm -hmm. in this industry on a daily basis. A lot of us aren't right now, you know. Absolutely. But, but, but yeah, we're still spending all that money like all we do. That we're blowing the mess out these flowers. <laughs> Absolutely. Blowing the mess out the flowers, but we're not owning anything. But yeah. yet we are now because we have two faces right here. Two <laughs> faces. We have Miss Whitney Beatty here, and let's and we also have a lovely. Let's go ahead. Lovely yes. young lady who's returned to our studios Another tonight. Returning champ, indeed. Yes, so great Introduce to be yourself. here again. My name is Jana Johnson, and I am the owner of Royal Purple House. So we're a holistic wellness center. Welcome yes. back to the show. And uh, <laughs> we're developing here <laughs> in South LA. And we are really all about holistic health practices, holistic living, and we definitely encourage and educate and uh, celebrate the use of cannabis in those practices. Um, and some of the main things we're up to right now, we have guided meditations, cannabis enhanced guided meditations every Saturday morning, such a beautiful space, all about self-care, self-love, yoga and meditation as well. We have every Saturday evening, every other Saturday evening, and uh, we're really just building community, awesome. building wellness from the inside out, mm -hmm. building community and celebration of this plant, of ourselves, of our wholeness, <coughs> of our wellness. So you say from the inside out. I mean, what you yeah. have, you also have meal plans going on, or, or are you just <laughs> you know, educating people on the uh, on the, uh, the truth uh, is, the yeah, absolutely, absolutely, exactly. You better believe that the two there go hand in hand. Always delicious, healthy snacks at our classes because right? the munchies you, are. Oh, you real. didn't tell us that the last yes, time. Yes, it says healthy no, snacks. No, she did. You she remember? did. No, I kept saying it all the time. Like healthy, healthy snacks. Healthy snacks. <laughs> snacks. Um, yeah, that really is part of it. Gotta feed it. You gotta feed the culture, right? Gotta um, feed the culture. They don't get the munchies anyway. Right. They talk some shit anyway. Like, well, girl, where the chips at? Right, right, right. <laughs> um, and also the space that I'm developing is really going to start with plant-based foods being an option and being accessible for people. Excellent. Um, just as quick and accessible as, you know, a jack-in-the-box or something like that. It's really about access and um, making it still delicious and having those conversations about about how we can feed ourselves, how we can nourish ourselves, and the decisions we make that can really affect our health. Right. Now, you know, when you were here last, I want to continue on some of the conversation we had. Sure. And that is your program is it goes against the common notion that cannabis people are lazy stoners. Right. When, in fact, you actually have a program where cannabis patients, mm -hmm. advocates, mm -hmm. And um, recreational users can get together, but in a physical environment where they're actually moving and, you know, yes. working the body. And yoga yes. is known to work the body, mind, and soul. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Touching mm -hmm. base with all of those important elements of the, Absolutely. Of the spirit, the, the self. Absolutely. So, Speak yeah, on that a we bit. have, and actually, our next class Closer is to tomorrow. Your a little bit. Okay, the next oh, class is actually tomorrow evening. You have a great voice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um,. So that space, yes, it's all about mind, body, and spirit. Mindful movement, mindful stillness. So we have a beautiful yoga instructor. And actually, we were just talking about the uh, Emerald Exchange. We can get back to that. But she just had a class there. Her name is Manelli. I saw it. Yeah, and she, she's been doing her practice of cannabis-enhanced yoga. Um, and so we've come together to do yoga flow that goes seamlessly into a meditation flow. And it's really deep and powerful. And again, it touches on the body. You have the movement, the spirit within yourself and connection <coughs> with other people as you're, you know, you always talk in over cannabis and have their ciphers and there's space for that before and after the practice. And did you say cipher? No, I did I say cipher. cipher. Do you mean bars? <laughs> <laughs> with a, with a, with I mean smoking in rotation. With instrumental switch, <laughs> give, it to a, give us some instrumental switch. I mean smoking in rotation. I, 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 we're about to give you some instrumentals. Say, when we hear cipher, we're thinking like you're talking about rapping. <laughs> we're about to give you some instrumentals. That's true, right? You got bars popping. But anyway, moving on. Uh, but music is also definitely part of the vibe. No doubt and, about that. Um, and what's the turnout like at these events? The turnout is great. Uh, you know, again, so the two of us have both been building our own classes, right? And mm -hmm. so we've recently come together to do this joint class. And it's just 
community. It's just people who feel safe and comfortable smoking, who enjoy talking about this plant, who really appreciate the effects of it and embrace it. We also have a lot of new people to cannabis and new people to yoga and meditation as well. And it's great wow. for that because it's definitely all levels, yoga as well as the meditation. The yoga is not intense. It's not to, meant to be a workout physical. It's meant mm. to move mindfully in your own body so that you can reconnect deeper with yourself, right? Mm. And so it's guided in a sense that allows you one with the cannabis to really just relax into the space into yourself with each other and then you know starting off slow to really move within your body right um and it's it's really holistic it's really accessible and it's really a space of community and we have people that have come all the way i mean the space is actually in inglewood the studio but we've had people who've come all the way you know north of hollywood in south la we get a lot of people especially at my meditations sunday or excuse me saturday mornings it's a lot of local people in south la who just want to come for that space of just self-care right sometimes to just spend some time with themselves take care of themselves in a space of love where they can relax with this plant that they love and not be judged right so that's what it's about that's awesome, that's awesome. yeah i see what i believe is a perfect marriage here between uh, your services uh -huh. and the products I'm that, thinking, uh, right? Whitney See? Offers. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> because when you think about cannabis advocates, patients, and uh, recreational users, the whole gamut, whatever that includes, mm -hmm. uh, there are there are varieties of us. You know, absolutely. You know, there's the um, well, there's a variety. Let, let's even let the imagination roll. Right. Um, but there also is this upper tier mm -hmm. of cannabis users who insist on the best plants and oh, the absolutely. best medicine, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is where yes. the apothecary case comes into play because these are the kind of That's people... That's my demo. Uh, We're looking for... Get in front know. of your microphone. Absolutely. Nice. So my demo is definitely those higher end users, those medical users, Word. those urban professionals, those um, women... Um, Fam, you know, people who have kids in the house, those are our demos. And what we've learned, you know, it really is. Mm. It, it becomes everybody. Yeah. And what we've right. learned is that what people thought was the demo of a cannabis user, yep. when you have in their head that it's some um, college kid who's being, you know, wild and naughty for a couple of years, right. that is not the truth. You know, um, Ease did a survey recently, and the numbers that came out were really interesting. I believe it was 63 or so percent of people who had used cannabis said that they used it for some medical purpose. Right. Yeah. Um, or 49 percent of the um, people who smoked cannabis had a college degree. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about people who make real money, who right. are, you know, who are very active Thriving. in their community. They're yeah. your neighbor. They're your friend. They're yeah. your doctor. They're your lawyer. Prominent and they also use cannabis. So mm -hmm. what we need to do as a community is make sure that we're working to clean out people's outdated views of who right. a cannabis user Thank is. By, and that's something that my brand does by making sure that we give them things that match their lifestyle. I, I like tie-dye as much as the next person. Exactly. But you know what I don't have in my house? Uh, <laughs> no tie-dye. I'm not rocking. That's no, just, that ain't it. me. And so I want to be able to offer people don't other judge things. Me. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm just I'm giving judgment. people the opportunity to step yeah. their no, game up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it speaks to though the diversity of cannabis consumers, Absolutely. patients, users, and all that, just as we were talking about, right. because even like you were touching on a little bit the professions of people right. the who faces are in all of these different worlds, right. professionally, mm -hmm. economically. And it's just like, but we come together over this plan, right? Yes, we, we will do. quickly mm -hmm. join a cipher. A <laughs> exactly. In a heartbeat. And yeah. Suit, ties, skirts, right. dresses. Right. Together. Yeah, right there. Like, hey, and, and how we, are you? And can acknowledge uh, that it enhances the connection. And it brings, you know? right, it brings people to together. Exactly. It brings people together. So, exactly. I was uh, recently uh, medicating mm -hmm. of, at a break, and I saw an older black gentleman waiting on the bus. And... Um, I, you know, I, I thought to myself momentarily, I'm like, wow. Let me I? let him hit that. <laughs> right? No, no, I'm thinking to myself, damn that. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, do I need to wait for this guy to get on the bus to, right. to medicate? Because yeah. I've got to get back upstairs. i got work to do. And I said, hell with it. You know, it's legal, more or less, and yeah. everybody kind of gets it out here. Yeah. And so I, you know, uh, began medicating. And you lit up. he actually yeah. had on a, a, a college, a, a well-known university's, you know, shirt and hat. I knew he probably was either alumni or, you know, or, or a worker. Bum, they got it. Well, <laughs> come on now. It's, it's a nice it's neighborhood. <laughs> anyway. Like ain't no bum sitting in the he doorstep. Said to, he there. turned to me and said, smells good. Right, right. 
<laughs> you know? Wow. And I, I just you know, make you smile. E- even even that minor, just that little thing there, that yep. bit of acknowledgement. But the smoke does smell good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You made really me feel speak. more comfortable. Yep. And so I continued to medicate and yep. he began to uh, talk about his views and some yeah. of the things he felt. And yeah. he was actually pro cannabis in his views. I thought that was yeah. so cool. It's, it is so unifying. Yes, it is so unifying. Yeah. Now, I got to tell you, I come, you, I come, tell you, I come, I come from the groovy 80s. I just want to <laughs> leave off with this. I come from the groovy 80s. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> they were so groovy because yeah. you, you're talking about a time that right off the 70s and right about the time that uh, folks was working together. I'm talking about black, white, right. brown. There wasn't as much division throughout America. Everybody was kind of getting to the point where they thought like, well... We're all here together. We might as well get along. <laughs> and I remember, man, even in the late 70s, whenever anybody would have cannabis from whatever side of the fence you were on, how unifying it was for us. We'd be out in the park yeah. out on Belmont Plateau. I'm from Philadelphia. Shouts to West Philly <laughs> and the Plateau back in the good old days. You know, even uh, Will, Will Smith talked about it in his song Summertime. It was a groovy mm-hmm. place and wow. people got together over this plant. Yeah. And and, and not a lot has changed. That's one thing about L.A. I think that yeah. really makes L.A. Yeah. such, I, I hate to keep using the word, groovy place. <laughs> so now the plateau, Very is groovy. The, the plateau is the place where everybody blow. Yeah. Huh? Well, it used to be. Nowadays, uh, it's, it's, it, it, they've changed that a lot. Pennsylvania is uh, legal now to hmm. some greater or less degree. I think medical. Bottom line oh, being, you're plateau absolutely plateau right, ladies. I'm sorry go. about that long uh, <laughs> uh, 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 train of thought, but. The point is, it does bring people together. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's back up a little bit to talk (laughs) about um, this past Saturday and Sundays Emerald Exchange. E Square. That's that E Dose. Yeah, let me me, me bring you you back to that. You you missed a good time. (laughs) Because it was a lovely event. Whitney, you were there, and I want you to talk about how. It was good and hot. How, despite the temperature of the country and all of this racial stuff that's going on, how mixed was the the people there in in terms of you know so many different cultures and it was really diverse and it was very actually diverse. very nice to be there in the midst of mm. all the craziness that was going on and my phone popping off about things going on in Charlottesville to right, be right. there in a group of really diverse people who are really dedicated to this plant um, and I don't it, I I'm a big supporter of the Emerald Exchange I've been to this is my second now um, I'm a, uh, one of my friends um, Michael Katz uh, does a fantastic job and shout him, out to Michael is, Katz he's a he, awesome he's dude. an awesome guy. Has an awesome company. And, and Cher Bear, yeah, Sherry Bell, who yeah, hooked yeah, us up with. Yeah, Michael Cass been sitting. He's been here. They've got the really, really <clears throat> good team of really smart people putting together this mm-hmm. event, and it's different than than you know your typical cannabis event. Right. It's really a farmers market. It gives you an opportunity to not only try and, and what they do. I should mention is that they bring down growers mm-hmm. from the Emerald Triangle, um, you know, from Mendo, and then they mm-hmm. come down and bring their wares um and it's a, a farmer's market they had i think over 50 booths they yeah. also have a lot of um uh, things that you can do yoga meditation yeah. they've got they music the wellness there, just... hula hoop oh massage <laughs> how about yeah. a hula hoop friend See, out there ecor they, remember right exactly we had a uh, male hines mm-hmm. shout out to male mm-hmm. hines mm-hmm. We have they, they had a DJ out there and they was playing some like real like uh, uh, like electric electric music. They had live mm-hmm. entertainment, in fact. Yeah. They oh, had yeah. live bands. Yeah. Oh. Um, Chris uh, Sate, I want to yeah. Um, the herbal chef, Chris. The herbal chef. Yep. Um, was out there doing his gourmet thing. style, like gourmet, gourmet on the side so of this beautiful lake, doing you know. Uh, I think that. I heard that it was over six courses that he would. Yes, I mean, he told me. He, told he me, plays he told no me. games. His food is fantastic. He's, and I was like, man, I was watching to put it. I mean, put everything up and all. And they just sitting there popping bottles of champagne. As they should. And they I'm sitting there. I'm like, food. Chris, what's up, man? He's like, oh, what's up, man? Mm-hmm. I was like, uh, so like, is it over? What's left, man? <laughs> He said, <laughs> he just threw his hand up. Oh, he missed his party, buddy. Yeah. He said, man, I was, he said, I had it flooded, man. It was racked. I had everything, man. Everything. Yeah. I said, you had chicken too? He said, man, I had everything. <laughs> he, I said, damn, there's no morsels. He said, there's the nothing man, left. The man can cook. And I heard he's opening a Herb, restaurant. It's called Herb. Yeah, in Santa yeah. Monica. So really? I, the, yeah. first, the first, the uh, first, the first uh, cannabis cuisine. Shouts you know? to Chris, man. Rousing uh, round of applause. Get it. That's also, right. uh, 
the yeah, herbal chef, like THC, the yeah. herbal chef, yeah. just THC. So yeah, it was it was a beautiful event. It was a beautiful day. The location was fantastic. It was private. You know, the the people that were there were you know all walks of life, all mm -hmm. ages, all backgrounds, all demographics, all there for you know the plant. And the plant there was second to none. These were a lot mm -hmm. of companies that are spending their time and efforts making sure that you know they're the testing best, the best the best plant. You know, organic. best best grown Artisans. organic. Oh, absolutely. Truly, truly, truly. I told them that they're all, you know, talking about how how they're, you know, off, a lot of people are off grid now. They're using renewable energy. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're they talking to me about the way in which they grow the plant because actual growers were there. I'm like, you know, exactly. So it's made of miracles and bubble gum and drops and uh, unicorns, and you know, pee on it every morning. Exactly. It is the good exactly. stuff <laughs> that they got exactly. going on. Pixie dust, <laughs> like, you know. It was, wow. uh, yeah, I, I encourage people to go and check it out. Uh, yeah. It's a great way to also know who your growers are, who your cultivators are. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. And it's something no that doubt. we don't talk Very about. Very educational, yeah. in Farmer. fact, because you really get to learn a lot about how cannabis is, in fact, cultivated. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you hear, you know, now more than ever, you know, with more testing going on, you hear about people's, you know, cannabis being recalled or, right. or chemicals being used that aren't yeah. good um, across the board. And it's nice to have a, a, put a face with a name with the brand of cannabis right. that you're buying. You want to know what these people are doing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We want to send a shout out to uh, Bon Vivant because he was kind of a standout there. I mean, out there because uh, I heard a couple of people talking about his product, and you also have some of his product yeah, here. I, I, and they're from up north, mm -hmm. and he also gave us some nugs, you know, and that was a beautiful thing, and he shared with us like that. And there was lots of generosity. Right. So there his name is Cal, well. Cal, yeah. Cal Greenhow. What about that? That name is Greenhow. You know. <laughs> I also want to send a shout out to a friend of mine who dates back with the marijuologist all the way back to the early days of, I believe, 2009. His name is Brandon Dorsky. He's an attorney, but he has spent uh, quite a bit of his time and expertise in the cannabis industry as an entrepreneur, and we're looking forward to having him join us here on the show as well. And mm. you probably saw him because he was with one of the larger, more prominent booths out there, probably, I think, where you might have picked up some of your meds over the weekend. But that said, Shouts to Brandon as well. And, and again, I just want to go back and thank the Cher Bear, Sherry Bell. Yeah, no doubt. For hooking it up. And also, we got Brittany. to. We got to say thank you so much, Whitney, for giving us the directions. <laughs> Man. He's lost. We just had, had the Malibu. He's lost. We just had the Malibu. Oh, you were going to be way we, off the oh, trail. We, we, we had, had to go all the way back. We had to go all the way back around from Malibu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was well, a drive. So the reason being is because that's where it was last year. Yes. When we right. were there last yeah. year. You know? uh, and they hit us back and like, no, it's not there. It's this way. We're like, what? And Jenna, it's on a ranch. It literally is on a ranch. I mean, okay, yeah. you got to bring your cowboy boots yeah. or just oh, flip man, my shoes. Prepare to walk. Yeah. My yeah. shoes got totally yeah. dusty and dirty. My right. But was it better than the last one where the whole thing was uphill? Up the hill? Yeah. Yep. Oh, man, that was a workout. Yeah. Right. That. that was I came a workout. Week, you know, I had my yoga pants on. I was like, ready to get busy, right? We're going to have to hike. Right. But it was it was really pretty flat. You know, not a lot of up and down. Mm -hmm. It was pretty good, spacious. They had some good food there too. I yes, ate this bowl of uh, French fries with tomatoes, and uh, uh, it was just all kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, what that, was that was crazy. I, I mean, he, he let me. Yeah, get chicken, a little, like chicken oh, chunks. Crazy, yeah. It was, it was organic. Well, well, you knew they had to have some munchy food, right? And, and you that gotta it, have the munchy food. And, the, that, mm -hmm. and that, the way that was pretty that, healthy that, too. It was, yeah. it was a healthy uh, meal, didn't yeah. it? But it was like a, it was like a garbage meal, you know, like just right. like fries and tomatoes right. and whatever uh, kind of stuff that they had on the list that you wanted in there. You just make it was almost like a uh, chili fry, but that's awesome. It was with chicken. And, oh, it was good. <laughs> All right, so hold on, guys. You know, we got a few minutes before we get to the break, but I want to go to this caller who's <laughs> called in from the five six. Two. Okay. Let's Caller, go to what's your name? Where are you calling from? Rep Yo City. This is Tandy with Jane Green. Oh, oh, what's up, oh, what up, oh, you baby? You got talked up. We yeah. were just yeah. talking your name. So <laughs> That's all that <laughs> We spoke you up. Really, we did. Did y'all really? Yes, we did. Talking about me? Yes, we yeah. did. We were talking <laughs> bad about you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're glad to know you're a tuner. Thanks for listening. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> but definitely thanks for calling. We, we hope you didn't hear all this stuff we said earlier, boy. Oh, my God. We did not know she was going to call in. <laughs> I said I saw just, your beautiful just face. Just like my people. That sound about right. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't surprised, right? <laughs> you ain't surprised. <laughs> No, it was all good things, baby, all good things. So tell our listeners and tuners out there who you are, a little bit about yourself. Once again, you've been a guest here in our studios. Why don't you give our guest today, introduce yourself. Of course, Whitney already knows you. We've got the lovely Janet Johnson here, um, marijuana mindfulness. Um, 
tell our listeners and a, a little bit about yourself and who you are. Awesome. Well, guys, I literally was calling in to um, basically just show support. My name is Tanjanika. I'm the CEO of Jane Green. I'm an advocate and consultant in the cannabis industry. And I um, have an organization called Marine Queens. And so the, the, we did the very first Cannabis Me and PCSD Ooh. Summit. And the next thing, go ahead. No, you. Finish. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, the next thing that we have coming up is the Cannabis Veterans Ball that will be thrown in November. So we're ramping up for that, getting excited about that, and, like, I'm um, just making sure that, you know, we are all about veterans and making sure they have help when it comes to cannabis consumption, also those that have been negatively affected by the war on drugs. I'm an advocate for that as well. So those are my two lanes that I try to stay in and I try to be supportive of, you know, people. It was great running into y'all this weekend. Every single one of y'all, we never get a chance to see each other anymore. So, like, it was really, really great seeing, you know, you there and, like, repping your brand and, like, we can all collaborate on something hopefully very, very soon in the future. But, like, yeah, that's me. No, that's you. But I'm glad that I'm glad that I saw you. I'm glad that you uh this especially after I heard about your accent and everything out there. Then to see you out and about moving around, that's a good thing because it shows your muscles are still working. You're still pushing for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's CBD. Yeah. I swear by it. You yeah, get that CBD in your life. Exactly, CBD people. Y'all better check it out. Research Absolutely. it. Do your homework. Your due diligence. Absolutely. So. So, Tanjanika, you know, we have Janet J. Johnson here. Not again. to confused with Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Johnson. Medical own uh, style. Uh, marijuana mindfulness. And your other organization mm-hmm. is? Royal Purple House is the name of the business, yes. Very good. Yeah, and we have our meditation oh, right. classes, uh, my, marijuana mindfulness, yes. Right. And so, do you know, have you, have you, you've never met, right? No, I don't think so. So I'm really happy that you two <laughs> no. are meeting here yes, tonight. Yes, this is great. And they were, they did talk you up. <laughs> and it was all good things. Did they? Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we did. We, was, we intoned your yeah. name, Queen. Yes, we intoned your Talking name. Talking about the Emerald Exchange. Yep. Yeah. We big up you. We big up you. Put and you listen, yeah. so yeah. now you are a retired soldier. Yeah. Marine. Marine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I know you know other women who maybe not just Marine, but ha- are in the military. Mm-hmm. So can you just imagine how great it would be for you two to get together and start, you know, funneling some of your fellow veterans yeah. towards her organization who are cannabis uh, patients or uh, recreational users, but who would benefit so tremendously mm-hmm. from marijuana mindfulness and, you know, the meditation and yoga part of it and then the fellowshipping which is what i am most you know drawn by i've got to get over there myself so yeah. can you imagine mm-hmm. that i can't wait till you two ladies get together and and no and meet face absolutely to face. that's one of the things that we teach is natural alternatives we don't think I that cannabis it. is an end-all be-all mm-hmm. right but we teach about ayurvedic chinese medicine yes. we teach about you know acupuncture and i was in yoga meditation yes so yes. i would love to connect with you and like yeah. you know we vibe and work on something together yeah absolutely absolutely and um yeah just being able to i think meditation on your own but especially in a group setting is so powerful for just you know reconnecting with yourself with the with the part of yourself that's whole that's healed that's all of that and that's a lot of the you know from the patient standpoint that's really what it's all about um you know reconnecting with that part of yourself that you know is whole and healed um and strengthening your own systems and your own functions that are meant for your well-being um, and so, yeah, a lot of the different holistic stuff. So cannabis use, we have essential oils, um, incense, and that aromatherapy as well is very powerful for with connecting with that emotional peace and that emotional balance. Um, and so it's really meant to be a holistic experience. So. All that zen in one room. Y'all going to have pillows floating. A lot of zen in floating. one room. All, y'all going to have pillows floating A lot of shit. zen in one room. <laughs> pillows floating, you know what I'm saying? Just like, but can you imagine the energy, though? Like the yeah, energy the energy is real. Man. Yeah. The energy. Yeah. He just floating it's, it's all about there. elevation right on all the levels <laughs> and so and it, it's really felt and I, I just appreciate the conversation that happens afterwards the people the classes I mean the students who come um, it's really dope so yeah yeah and one of the other things that we mentioned earlier Tanjanika is having uh, Whitney here with the apothecary case she now has the new carry case carry case she's going to be featuring that tonight this is a portable case that can be, you know, 
very discreet and <laughs> very usable by patients and yes. recreational users alike. Absolutely. The low, low box. Right. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that as well a little later in the show. But uh, we need to get you back in the studio with us as well. And uh, maybe I'm do definitely a power always session. down to come visit you guys. I yeah. thank you guys so much, <laughs> and I just appreciate your platform in this industry, shining a light on us, and like helping you know Absolutely. elevate us all. So I really do appreciate it. I thank you guys. I didn't want to stay on long, Whitney Boo. Oh, you know what? And you know everybody got my number in that studio, so just get it from one of them. Call <laughs> me. <laughs> And we can link up <laughs> we whenever. Love you, girl. And like, yeah, you guys, I'm tuning in. I'm listening. I thank Yay. you guys so much. And yeah, like. <laughs> Keep it up. Yes. Mm -hmm. right, Great connecting with you. We'll definitely Black connect Black women in power, man. Y'all just, that makes me yeah. feel so good to see all these <laughs> sisters out here connecting. You know, now y'all got your own girls trip. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Y'all like girls, girls tripping, trip. spending money, <laughs> blowing trees. <laughs> you did? Girls trip. My Ten. Let's go right to the Right. Next. My kind right. Of all right. Look here. <laughs> Let's take a quick break okay. of some cannabis infused music. I love it. You're intelligently tuned to tonight's live episode of the Marijuana. Is yours truly, Richie Carr, E. Quarter Wolf, oh. L. Whitney Beatty, and <laughs> Jenna the lovely J. Jenna J. Johnson. <laughs> Stay Tangini, tuned. Jane Green. Shout out to Tangini. We'll see you soon. Stay tuned. Great Bye. music. We'll be right back. Uh. Monday, early morning, change your name. I reach over for my blood stash. I pop open the vial. I reach into my vial. There's nothing there in my vial. Contemplating was I high and smoked up all my shit Then was I stoned and smoked it all without not knowing it I have a quick, I spit and think One blood, two blunts, or was it three? Can't remember if I smoked it all with company Gotta admit the memory ain't nothing what it used to be Oh well that's me, I need some weed Can't hit the shop, it's too early Like that, the only thing I'm packing is food in a sack. Cause it's mandatory that I gotta be stoned. Like Ice Cube said, once again it's on. It's a fucked up feeling when you're California fiending. If you smoke blood, you know exactly what I'm meaning. Open up your jar when you trip, cause it's empty. But the night before, you could have swore you had plenty. With no connects and don't know what to do. So you try to drink a 40 as a substitute. But it doesn't feel the same as that Mary Jane. Creeping up real slow, marinating. In my brain, and I've been at the bottom feeling just like a peasant, saving all my roaches and scraping up my resin. I smoke so much weed that I sweat THC. A day without herb, I can never let it be. Oh, wow. Instead of packing like a pack rat, I was packing like a fat cat instead. Can't believe I did it once again. A fucked up habit that I got. I always do it to myself. I'm always smoking on my pot. I got no options. I could call a women from the streets. But it's a Monday and it's 6 a.m. before his peak. That's fucking weak. I need some weed. A long morning. THC free. I can't believe I got no marijuana for my brain I always do this cause Anita blunts my fucking name I need to go at 10 a.m. I pull up to the front, guess what? They're open Oh, why did I smoke you up? Smoke you up, smoke you up
the morning with a hangover Cause I don't think I ever went one day sober I wake and bake in the morning like a stray soldier And blaze those until my brain's in a straight coma I treat it like it's a race in the Daytona And feel like how you feel when you take eight somas I smoke a blunt to a roach and I'm still smoking Ride to this bitch till the fucking wheel's broken There's no puff puff, it's just puff air Cause if I puff puff, I'm handing you just air That's how it's been ever since I was 18 I pack up another fresh bow and take green There's no babysitting it, we baseballing it Cause all that talking does is waste all of it I break down a bunch of weed and got the swisher bro Roll it up, light it up, man we fix the smoke One blunt, three blunt, five blunt, slow Hot box in the car, rolling up the window Six bowls, eight bowls, nine bowls, smoke Hot box in the car, smoking up the endo And all these hot box in a Monte Carlo I take a hit from the split, say goodbye to sorrow Blazing cigarros, get high like I'm Dave Navarro Cause when it comes to smoking weed, I'm a general You talking about smoking blunts, I smoke ten of those And break down a 50 bag of Kush and a bowl I smoke that Kush, you only find in high time centerfold I be smoking on that smoking shit with a kid You feel like you just got hit by a monkey with a brick the room's filled up with so much smoke it blows the roof off Cause I smoke like trains, I smoke like I'm Snoop Dogg There's no babysitting it, we baseballing it Cause all that talking does is waste all of it I break down a bunch of weed and got the swisher bro Roll it up, light it up, man we fix the smoke One blunt, three blunt, five blunt smoke Hot box in the car, rolling up the window Six balls, eight balls, nine balls smoke Hot box in the car, smoking up the endo Get hit on the hour every hour for at least an hour Unleash the power of the green root of flower I keep smoking even though there's no getting higher Firefighters approach us cause they think my shit's on fire I smoke a couple bags with you with some hash and goo And smoke like the weekend on a Sunday afternoon It don't stop 24-7 smoking some dro pot Cause I smoke just like mechanical robot There's no babysitting it, we baseballing it Cause all that talking does is waste all of it I break down a bunch of weed and got the Swisher bro, roll it up, light it up, man we fix the smoke One blunt, three blunt, five blunt smoke Hot box in the car, rolling up the window Six bowls, eight bowls, nine bowls smoke Hot box in the car, smoking up the endo One blunt, three blunt, five blunt smoke Hot box in the car, rolling up the window Six bowls, eight bowls, nine bowls smoke Hot box in the car, smoking up the endo One blunt, three blunt, five blunt smoke Nigga, not told. A nigga got a rock for the gang so cold. Got the 
Japanese beans, Brody so blow Eyes low, let the tie blow You tell your homegirls you don't, but baby I know For sure, smoke it up, then the fun go down How you do when that sun go down and the smoke go round How it go when your clothes hit the ground, uh, I beat it up like it stole something You caked up, let me hold something I blow it out, then we smoke something And we can keep it on the low And don't nobody need to know nothing Now let's smoke California smoke, I got the kind of dope to make a G nigga choke. A couple tokes out of backwood, roll a king size that, cause the dody tastes that good. Playboy on the grind, fly chick on my side, blowing that Obama OG, how the nigga ride. Presidential down PCH, mandatory haters never want to see me straight. Fuck, stay high on the low, sticky icky icky dro. Give a herb a pass like Proposition 64. Five J's in my case stash, no you can't hit my smoke if your breath smell like straight ass. Need weed, hit the spot, flavors like soda pop. Always got a blaze 20 minutes after 4 o'clock Wanna smoke, girl, you know who to call And when a nigga wanna stroke, yeah, I know who to call And that's you Just cause I didn't say that I wanna smoke Want smoke. You say you want a nigga with the business, but you caught up in your feelings and the nigga wanna keep it on the low. And I just wanna smoke. I just wanna smoke. Come smoke with me. Now you wanna smoke with a nigga. Come smoke with me. Come smoke with me. Come smoke with me. Hear this. Leaders of all nation, man. This is my warning to all and hope we cut down the hard drugs from the land. Look out, be the man in the one. Who know if we legalize the herb, how do we get rid of the crockhead them? Me tell them we legalize the herb, how do we get rid of the cocaine them? Now look at no, no, listen, no, say we have been, we have been, we have been a conference tonight. In the background, the one them call Ninja Man. And the song is Legalize the Herb. You know, we've been playing that song for quite some time on the station. It typically is a song we uh, end the show with, but you're in our cannabis-infused musical segment, and thank you for tuning in tonight to our live episode of The Marijuologist. The only show that explores the global impact of cannabis throughout California and the entire world. I am your humble host, Richard Carr. Joining me as always, my esteemed colleague, the one them call E Quarter Wolf. Oh, my norm from such shows as. Be sure to tune into his uh, show, First Fridays of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, that's the Wolf's Den live performances right here in the studios. In other words, Bars. 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 Also, bars. every set, every yes. I mean, every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific right. Standard Time, yes. you have Just Hip Hop, just an indie mix show. Thank you for making that plug. Just playing Appreciate all that. a whole bunch of independent artists, giving them good rotation exposure to our massive You're millions, an artist. millions of viewers and listeners that we are so appreciative to have on our network. Thank millions you. upon you millions. So, we are yeah. LA Talk Live, and we are That's more it. than One just One more time, talk. Just Hip Hop. I forgot about Just, just Hip Hop. Thursday, 7 Thursday. p.m. Yep. Pacific Standard Time. Right. right here at LA Talk Live.com. All right. So with all that said, man, we are having a party here tonight in the studio. We got Chicago, like Chicago on the building. Live. We, we got, got some Chicago down. folk in the building. Just in came the house from tonight, him. man. You know what I'm saying? The Salt Book Town. Right. You, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, we got an open mic for anybody who wants to step up. You won't be on camera, but you at least can. We got uh, Rob back in the out. building. Ain't that Rob over there? James. I mean, James out there. Big James back in the building. James. Oh. James. Back in the building again. <laughs> got Columbia in the building, y'all. 
You know what I'm saying? All right, so back to the issue at hand, and that is women (laughs) in the cannabis industry, women in business, more specifically in the cannabis Mm -hmm. industry. We have Whitney Beatty, CEO, founder of Apothecary Case, in the studio with us tonight. We've also got the lovely Janet Johnson, both of them very lovely ladies, taking time out of their busy schedules, away from their boyfriends to come and hang out with us here uh, on The Marijologist, you know, to speak their truth, um, to talk about what it's like to be uh, not just a woman, but a black woman in the cannabis industry. That's, that's it's unique not easy. in and of it's itself. It's not easy. I already, I already can imagine. It's Being a black easy. woman in business in America, Absolutely. you know, is it's one thing. Uh, in a cannabis, in the cannabis industry, there's so much stigma, you know, about the plant and so much negative attention uh, to the plant. I, I keep reading stupid stories uh, every day put out by whatever news agency uh, about the bad part of cannabis. But yes. I also keep hearing all the stories about the good part of cannabis, and that is the fact that it's healing properties. Yeah. It's ability to bring people together, you know, consciously, socially. It's ability to economically <laughs> empower people for themselves yeah. economically, like you ladies. So speak to that. I mean, I, I think that this is a real industry, and that's the conversation that we need to have. I, I believe that Forbes printed an article that said that mm. cannabis would have more jobs than manufacturing by 2020. Mm. This is a real business. And Trump wants to bring back coal. Hey, hey, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, there's just, there's a lot of opportunity um, there, so I don't want people of color to sleep on it. Right. Um, mm. And I think that we need to, as an industry, make sure that we are very mindful of the price that urban communities have paid yeah. um, to pave the way for this. You know, how many people have gone to jail um, and and to this day aren't able to participate in this newly legal market, yeah. um, you know, which is patently unfair. And, you know, you see people are now, you know, we've got new legislation that's up um, that was put forth by um, Cory Booker. Booker. We talked we, about that last week with our good friend Nick Bucci from Law Enforcement Action Partnership. Right. It's worth mm-hmm. the conversation, and so so they're so, overturning a lot of stuff now. Mm-hmm. So let, over those let cases. me let me let me posit this. Let me let me let me put this out here on the table for everybody to consider. Could Cory Booker's mm-hmm. new legislation to legalize at the federal level mm-hmm. cannabis across the board and have retroactive powers to release from prisons black men and brown men who have been um, improperly sentenced to extremely long prison terms for minor possession, could this be a form of reparation? Hmm. So I'll put this on the table for you. I'm going to offer this. I'm, I'm, I'm your new president. Well, we need I just stepped into <laughs> office. <laughs> and I have the power to do this. The government, you know, we got to run it. There's a deficit, so I can't give you all a million dollars each. And that it would include myself. But if I could give you reparations, and it would be Cory Booker's legislation, and that is to legalize at the federal level all cannabis, all cannabis possession, allow uh, black and brown people to be freed from prisons, would you accept that over a million dollars? Yes. Wow, that's a powerful I mean, I, question. Well, number one, I know that my yeah. million dollars ain't going to show I'm up. Damn, I'm deep. From, <laughs> from, from Trump. Let my people out. <laughs> But I do agree that that is a good place to start. And I don't think of that as reparations to the African-American community or the brown community. That's reparations across. I mean, to all of our communities, our inner cities across the board Mm -hmm. um, would do so much better to have these men back at home, to have these people to not have a felony on their their background that keeps them from being able to be employed. Um, There's and, you know, and we've got an industry that we should be making sure that has opportunity to employ these people yeah. and to give them that jobs too. those people out you know yeah they were entrepreneurs before you know Chad came and opened his dispensary we need exactly. to make sure that we're taking care of you know uh, of those communities um, and I think that the entirety of the country will benefit from that 
from the you know uh, from the rebuilding of that community with the cash infusion with the families back together because they gave me some heavy felonies you all right know so I mean? you, and, I, and that's why I, I have how do you feel to about sure. that like, I was would saying. you accept that yeah. as reparation exactly over a because dollars? i was a, i was once the guy that was on the other side you know behind the bar and uh you mean the bars? The bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you just had the one, you should have walked around. The bars. <laughs> <laughs> the one. Right. Yeah, I was behind the, the bars, you know. And mm. So I feel that, you know what I mean? Let the, let them out because it's, it's, it's ridiculous over this particular flower, and uh, that they can can't regulate, you yeah. know. And it just it makes no sense. And you got you got you got herb. some and majority of majority of the men that I knew, and still know, that uh been incarcerated over over cannabis. They're not really not not the bad guy. They're not out here like the violent guy. They're not. They're mainly they're mainly just a hustler. Mm -hmm. And the, the majority of the time, they provide for their families and they're able to like eat and buy a couple things that they would like to buy. But it's the hustle. You know what I mean? And so they condemning the hustle when you're giving us felonies. Like myself, I've been on the other side as well, and I and now I got felonies from this. And so I have to. Have a good hustle, or, good, or become become this like extreme entrepreneur because I'm going to be getting doors slammed in my face, even with so my education U Uber and my degrees. And Lyft is not going to work for you. Is that what you're saying? Oh no, no doubt. As a side hustle. No doubt, but they but they but they I'm they, they check my just, background and say I can't get it. Gotta work it's on the new material. They check my background and said I'm not. You know, I'm like right. wow. And that so, happens too. I mean, and that's why we need people of color also to stand up for us within mm. this community. Yeah. Organizations like um, the Minority Cannabis Business Association, which has been out there on the forefront of not only making sure that, you know, uh, that people of color and uh, those situations, you know, especially past convictions, are thought about as, you know, people, as states sit down to write these laws up. Mm -hmm. And they're also been vocal within the industry, making sure that we ha pick the right advocates. Like, mm -hmm. I know that they're um, they're protesting um, a big conference um, that's coming up. You that, spoke uh, about yeah. that offline. Let's um, talk yeah. more yeah. about that. Uh, so um, a, a, a large conference within this space has... Um, invited, as I understand, uh, Roger Stone to be well, a keynote. What do you mean by a large conference in the space? Let's be more specific for our uh, uninitiated I, I don't want to get the... You don't need to give out details, but you mean that wrong. there's an right, organization... Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, so we, there's a lot of conferences in the cannabis. Um, all yeah. day long. All day long. It's we become a big thing. I could go to one every weekend. <laughs> right. Um, and so a very large conference, a very gr large group of, you know, gathering of people who are in this industry, you know, they're having a conference and the one of the keynote speakers <laughs> is Roger Stone. Mm -hmm. um, and so the Minority Cannabis Business Association, which I am a member, I'm not a board member, so I wasn't involved in this decision, but I do support it, to you know to stand up and say no that's not okay right. you know in the same way that we say all money isn't good money right. mm -hmm. all advocates aren't good advocates and this person has you know said time I and time it. again you know <laughs> shown us how how racist he can be he said some things that are absolutely out of pocket and absolutely an inappropriate mm -hmm. especially in this time and climate where last week i saw you know people walking down streets with torches talking about get you know, go home people immigrant. really mm -hmm. don't understand if everybody America, is an immigrant if, if you're not you're a, nation every, of a nation of immigrants from the Listen, beginning of time somebody if you're came not here black and i'm talking about black like exactly the black color black, black and i'm the black. color black mm -hmm. i don't know I'm nobody black that color. i'm black and i'm black <laughs> right right yeah. i'm black in the black in the black black in the black in the black black in the black in the black black remember that movie that remember that movie cd4 um <laughs> he was my like, point being that's all his lyrics is i'm black in the black in the black no one <laughs> has any sense any notion any idea what it is like to be black in america man absolutely it, 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 it is as close to prison <laughs> As any brother who at least got locked up for the weekend can understand because you really are stuck in your own mind at least in a place where you can't escape from almost exactly he hear this out if you will meaning that if it was easy for me to go back to Africa I can prove to you that I could probably get a million black people to go back to Africa. They did it with Liberia. They did it with Liberia with former slaves who said, I'll take the boat back. back. Mm -hmm. Give me that one way ticket. And that's how Liberia was established. If you gave black people that opportunity again, freely, look, y'all want to get on a boat? You don't like <laughs> Trump? You hate America? Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. We don't care. Want a one-way ticket back to Africa? Watch how and, boring and when you America get back be. there, 
knowing that there is land and a reception, um, a, a way to receive you back, like, like the immigrants who came to America and got off on Ellis Island, well, let's take us back to Africa and start us on the very tip of it. Let us show our passports or at least our driver's license, even if you got a county ID. Hmm. Let me back in. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what would happen to Africa if <laughs> the four of us went back there? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> would it not change? We we yeah. we we could uh, like walk away from America. You know, America would be so boring. This is how the whole thing take all of our season. That's fine with me. Up. It was yeah. born. It was like, damn, the NBA is back to that. The NBA back to all white yeah. boys. Like, yeah. man, it was born. I'm not going. Now, I don't. I, I don't mean to be <laughs> radical, <laughs> no, right. and I'm not saying we should. No, sweetie, and I'm not saying that that is the right stand our ground. Stand down. And not only that, but I want to make sure that I'm standing up for all the people who are, you know, I don't. You know, we can. I think. Jesse, uh, who is the president of Minority Cannabis Business Association, said it best. You know, we don't we're not just trying to build any industry. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to build the industry that that was, you know, that we had a vision for. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make cannabis, you know, the best industry, not just another industry. Right. And part of that is us coming together and saying what we stand for and what we're not willing to stand for. Right. And personally, I, you know, as a woman, as a woman of color, I don't want to, you know, to sit through. Uh, you know, uh, pandering to somebody who has been so blatantly, you know, uh, anti-black, so blatantly anti-female. That's just, it's inappropriate to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are the sort of things that we need to, you know, as a, as a community, as a cannabis industry, you know, start to address and start to be able to talk about. So I brought that up because, and I went on a tangent, I apologize. <laughs> I want to get to Senator Beatty. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, call me Marcus Garvey instead. You know, and uh, catch me in, in the in the winds, as Marcus Garvey once wrote. I Mark. Right. Because we need to consider that idea. Imagine if we could send you back to Africa. Donald we Trump can go back to Africa. Yes. Hold on. First, we're going to do and that. I, and I can all give the Mexicans you, and all the give niggers you all the land you need to grow. To Africa now. I can give you all the land you need to grow now. cannabis on. And I could give you all the land you need to build your own trees, to build your own product and we got, we got to get to your product but I want to get to Jenna I was talking about reparations hmm. would the ability for Cory Booker's legislation to go through mm -hmm. and again federally legalize cannabis across the board and retroactively release yeah, I definitely think be reparations for you? it's a bold proposition. And I think that it needs, you know, it's, it's going to be a process. But absolutely, I think that's the direction, especially for nonviolent crimes. And when you're talking about possession, right. and now we're getting to a place only because we have particular types of research or science or other people who are now advocating for it. But this has been something that people have been using uh, you know, medicinally for decades, for centuries. centuries. I've seen nuns on so, videos, hey, uh, nuns yeah. making it and smoking hey, uh. it. You know? So it's interesting just how it comes back around. But absolutely, I think that there needs to be a recognition of it. And the process of doing that, you know, is a the touchy one. A what do you think the really impact of doing it would be? But I think, yeah, the, also the other side you of it. You are black women in business. Yeah. We talked about the that earlier. The other side of it and is setting up a space to receive that, right? Because mm -hmm. that Closer will be. Closer to your microphone. Yeah, because that will be a big influx of people returning home. You know, that will be, like you said, though, having opportunities for jobs, having opportunities for people to be able to now use it mm -hmm. in productive ways. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something you, in, you mentioned also <laughs> that was very interesting about going going back to Africa and this preposition, but really it all being in your mind, this like kind of mental internal prison that we sometimes find ourselves in. I and feel that way. Yeah. And, and it's not really about what we can run away to or go back to. Cause we not going back there. We never, we we're not born there. You know what I'm we saying? We're going back so to Cali. So it's, it's, Cali. but we Cali. have to recognize the, the internal, you know, revolution, if you will, as J. Cole said, <laughs> but right. you know, that internal uh, mindset shift, that allows you to think more in your freedom and the freedoms that we do have um, and think more in the powers that we do have in our voice and mm -hmm. what we stand for and what we allow. Yes. And so it's a matter of um, our mindset shifting, um, which is, again, another reason as far as meditation. I think it's a great connection with our internal truths and allowing the space to express that in productive ways and in community. And, um, but it's a, it's a matter of cultivating that within ourselves 
And so we have to be bold within ourselves and be okay with what feels good to us, what's, what's really true for us and what really matters for us and not just be out here standing for whatever, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, Senator. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, exactly. You, um, uh, but, but yeah, but these communal spaces, I think really allow for that. Um, the, this plant allows for us to really go deeper within ourselves. For sure, oh, for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And for so sure. I, I think that's I just what I love. Earlier, earlier, <laughs> yeah. this earlier one in the show, I was like just kind of zoned out listening to y'all. I was like, <laughs> no, I, see, I said, man, you're not saying here. nothing on the air right now. Like, get into the groove. And I'm like, <laughs> I had to just like no, I'm listening. Back up, now I'm back yeah. Well, the, 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 the reason I brought that up is, uh -huh. is because I think what is about to happen in this country, one way or another is going to be revolutionary. Yeah. It is going to put us um, as black folks once again in the the spotlight mm -hmm. of 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 power. You know, yeah, um, and that right there. Will I be don't care what anybody says about Barack Obama's election and yeah. two term presidency. He broke a barrier, mm -hmm. at least mentally. Absolutely. So it's it's not against the notion that mm -hmm. though Hillary Clinton won and she was the first woman president, the popular vote wise, okay. uh, less than a thousand people, the electoral college, I had to look it up. It's like about five, 600 people hmm. who changed that election yeah. and that you said against the popular vote. And that my prophetic friend, you said about us as a black race, uh, that's very <laughs> wonderful. You know what I mean? Because All right. So my point is going to happen. That that is going to most um, definitely happen. Empowerment yeah. is where we're yeah. headed right now. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and we've we have we have got to step to that. Yes. Right? And that's what I mean about us once again being in in the spotlight, the limelight, mm -hmm. where yeah. we're gonna wind up having you know, the Bible predicted the last shall be first, the that's first shall be last. My prophetic friend. You know, right. It's this real. is what's happening right now. And, and it's interesting what you said about the mindset shift that per Barack, per that Barack Obama kind of provided. Um, as Paradise far as I mean, shift, you're yeah, yeah because you long. have children now who are who have grown who are growing up. They ain't never seen and a white And they president. yeah, their only reference is a black man <laughs> as a president. Exactly. Like, can you exactly. imagine? Mm -hmm. yeah, and that. so you're growing up with a whole nother mentality. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we continue to like reiterate these messages of black people doing well and doing positive things and now it's no surprise to me that women are taking such bold steps and positions in this cannabis industry right with this you know this female plant right and we have all this nurturing Browsing and communal <laughs> right it's really real and uh it's just it's beautiful to see because you have women who are being wonderful examples um, and who are really allowing ourselves to be shown. <laughs> oh, what I was, what I, <laughs> exactly. What I, was I think say, and be exposed yeah. in real ways. But what so. I was going to say to you, Rich, was that, that what I was saying about your prophetic uh, speak right there was mm. that will be like the the revolution and that will be titled the black lash that's what that will be you know so it's that's coming what, that will be the our black, black that will be our black coming. our black lash you know that will be it change i love also. seeing Trust that and you know I, the power oh, infrastructure yes, though. i hope you see you know my goal would be that we see that more in the mainstream media not only you know yeah. the presence of females in this industry you mm -hmm. know we've got more female ceos in the cannabis space than in any other industry but you know being able to show communities of color that there are people who are working in this industry, that this is, you know, a real industry. We're not just sitting around smoking all right. day and, you exactly. know, right. having Cheetos. We are running business. <laughs> right. We are out there, you know, raising right. investment Edibles money. We are, right. we are moving, you know, uh, product. Mm -hmm. Everything that Making every deals. other business has, mm -hmm. we have as well, yeah. with a huge layer of regulation on top, right. just to make it extra right. confusing. Yeah. That was one exactly. of the things I wanted you to bring but, up but earlier. I, but I think that when they get that opportunity to see us in there and see us doing that, what it does is it breaks down some barriers that I I think still remain within the African American community in particular, yeah. um, but uh, communities of color as a whole. In that, there's still a stigma. But you know, there's still little uh, you know uh, church ladies who grew up with me is like, oh, come away from that plant. You're gonna go to jail. You're gonna yeah. be arrested. Yeah. And they would, you know. The, those other kids can do that, but you can't do that. You know, this plan has already caused so many problems and so many issues within our community yeah. that they that makes people wary to get in. And so I want them to see us yeah. out here doing yep. our thing. So the question would be the question would be is like you said, you want them to see like who would who are the who are the them or they's that yeah. you know, we want them to see who are who, who is that particular who are those particulars? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? That we need to really get this across that's really gonna make that particular decision. You know? Yeah. 
because they've uh, they've grown up all their life knowing about cannabis. Yeah. They were young once. They have all either smoked it or been around their they cousins, uncles, aunties, whatever, <laughs> who smoked that. They drunk uncle who smoked that shit while drinking. You know what I mean? So why you gotta out is, me like that, this, man? Come <laughs> on. Why you gotta put so me this is nothing drunk, new. Man. This is nothing uh, new. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. This is not, this has been going on way before we were even born. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, well, let's let's take a moment to acknowledge the fact that the reason the Anslinger laws that came into place to uh, schedule cannabis as a Schedule One drug by uh, Henry Anslinger was initiated by the notion that cannabis was used by Mexicans and blacks, right. uh-huh. jazz players, right. uh-huh. who are out to rape our white women. Exactly. exactly. They used to make those TV, those black and white movies where they, exactly. they smoke weed, they, they, they do right. crazy and shit. Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness. Yeah, Reefer so Madness, that's exactly what it was. Let's not forget that. I mean, yeah. this is where the propaganda. this whole yeah. propaganda campaign comes from. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's still going on. Wacky tobacco. The, pro- the, the propaganda still goes on. And even yeah. in, as mainstream media comes closer and closer to the this topic you still see things Bo-bo. that come up and it's you know marijuana mamas oh these bad evil right. moms but yeah but yeah right. marlboro know, and newport got you know they little pack well, coming out i mean or every kind of <laughs> but wine marlboro in mama's the book okay yeah. you know yeah. marlboro got they knew they pack of uh DJ mama it's, it's, it's funny it's when mama has wine. a glass of wine right. it's not funny when mama has a joint right right but <laughs> right. i'm not heard about the medical conditions that alcohol is fixed. exactly <laughs> right. what is that convi- right. i'm just you know i'm trying to say Right. <laughs> All right, so I've got to ask you this, though, because this this is, of course, for me, a particularly sensitive issue. When I hear people talk about the mainstream, which if we were really to smell what's cooking, <clears throat> it'd be, you know, Cannabis. aside a mainstream on the griddle. It's mm-hmm. dead. Mainstream is dying. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the youth are changing that. Just mm-hmm. like independent yeah. music. You is know? YouTube mainstream? Right. One would not normally consider YouTube mainstream nope. in the way that most media people right. look at the word mainstream. Right. And again, it's a sensitive issue to me because you probably not may not think of Internet broadcasting as mainstream. mainstream. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, and I've asked this question many times on the air on various uh, formats. When are we going to step up and create our own, say it with me now, mainstream? (laughs) We're doing it now. How Mm -hmm. is it that the internet, which gives us the ability to go live on Facebook and Twitter and capture better news on the spot than any TV station you've ever watched. It's got to be called From down there. From CNN to TNN, you got people on the spot with their own yeah. capture of news. How are we not now? Well, we are, damn it. Believe I'm it. claiming it. You need to move back to the to my left over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Trump, who, you hide, who you hiding from? Um, <laughs> oh, you really want to get off the It's 544. It's 544. They're going to be getting online. I must be messing up your brand. Let me get off the camera for a minute. I was only hoping to help you. So my point is, we are mainstream. We, we, we got to figure out our own mainstream, <laughs> yo, is, is all I'm saying. No doubt. Uh, we got to start acknowledging what's out there, what's available, yeah. and, and take from what's available Um to create our own mainstreams and Facebook's a part of that. And okay, you got my info, sell it to whoever you want. If I get downline from some of that money, the way that Facebook will allow you to, Mm -hmm. you'll get some trickle down off that. All you doing is posting any damn way for free. They ain't charging nothing to sign up. But Rich, but that's where, but that's my point being that we need to create, and I'll shut up and leave it to y'all to figure this out. No, but out. that's where it starts. Our own freaking mainstream. And but damn it, I'm mainstream. Yeah, we no <laughs> doubt. Talk live because we, we're right. We ain't, we're not we 12 mainstream. million. We're not we 12 million strong. And we're not 12 we million strong. We ain't new to this. We're no, true to this. No, Nothing you could do to for this. For no reason. Mess around with us and but come it, out but black it start, and But it, start, it, starts with, it starts with, like, if you look at any of those other networks that's out there that we watched back in the day, the Channel 2s, 4s, 7s, all those stations, right? Yeah. And... Every little company just got with them that created their 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 brand and made their brand yeah. what it is. So yeah. now they became the popular, you know, brands or whatever. So yeah. same thing, same mainstream. the same thing with what, what we're doing. For example, your commercial, you know, uh, mm-hmm. just like if you're watching the Tide commercial or any of those kind of commercials, that's the same kind of commercial we'll be coming on here. But it's about yeah. the apothecary case yeah. on Absolutely. the network. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's the same thing. We're doing the exact same thing. But I think that's how we've gotten to this place right now. Mm. Is the fact that we do have these where other are outlets? We? You mean? know, where are we? The, the, we are in a place where I can 
You can create your own star. I can create a high end, beautiful cannabis, you know, humidor Let's talk and, about and have that be a career. That's yeah. where we are right, right now. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So look, yeah. you, we, we talked about it enough. We teased it enough. Why don't you pull it over to your, this um, beautiful yeah, closer there to you, you right there. And I want you to show this again. You got to hold it up a little so bit. So this is, higher. you know, this is, this is my sneak peek for you, you have to because lift it we a do. Bit. So, to my left. so, so Jay, oh, look Jay at that. No, right here. That's your camera right there. So, yeah. So I, I brought this little toy of mine. We have a classic apothecary case that is a four-strain case, has four strain jars that with humidity control, which means that you can you know put your cannabis in there, put a bovida pack in the lid, and that will make sure that your cannabis is at the right humidity point so you're not experiencing dryness, you're not experiencing or smoking mold, which are both you know, a smoke session ruining experiences. And if you're using cannabis for medical purposes and you're spending all this money for it, um, you know, when it dries up, those trichomes fall off. And so all that money and that value is in the bottom of your, you know, uh, of, of whatever you were storing it in. Right. And so you're saying four strains, meaning four different types of cannabis for yes. whatever your yes. desires or needs might be when it yes. comes down to cannabis. Could be some Dayquil. Sativa hey. or some NyQuil, you know, ab some Indica. That's and how it breaks down in a little hybrid or two in between. Absolutely. And you have a special way of storing them and keeping them from cross-pollinating. It, it's just like fish and chicken. No, you know you got to clean the counter. Stop so, playing. And you know, see, so separate these things. <laughs> exactly. It's important to do that. So our strain jars, you know, have the ability to write down exactly what's in there. You want to know what strain it is. You're going to want to know, is it a hybrid? Is it a sativa? Where'd you get it from? Any sort of facts that you want to make sure that you're keeping, you know, your head around whether you are a connoisseur or you're a patient and really want to make sure you're keeping, you know, score of what you're using. And then inside you'll find a bovita pack. Um, and that will, you know, make sure that you're keeping it moist without having to do all the work of humidity bead systems where, you know, it needs weekly maintenance. And if you forgot, you know. And they scare me anyway, yeah. those little bees. I don't know what they're doing in there. So, <laughs> Get out of here. So you we want to make sure, you know, make it easy components. for people to store plant. And that's what we do. So we have a four uh, strain model that's, you know, beautiful and also have space for your Four packs. different types of cannabis. Four, mm -hmm. four strains of uh, flour, four strains of dabs or extracts. It's mm -hmm. got... Uh, straps on the side. Can we look at the uh, dab extract containers? I don't you, have no, one. That's here. right. That's I fine. don't have it because we featured yes. those before. Yep, yeah. we did in the in the full featured box. And this the is full the travel box. Case this now. is a travel case. So and the, on the uh, so all of that is on one side, and there's a place so you can put up your oil pen, so you know your oil's not smelling out all over. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side of that case, you have um, the ability to store your pipes, to store your packs, to store your firefly, and there's a nook that you can pull out that has space for all your rollers, all your you know your lighters, your papers. All of that stuff. So Would that you please explain for the uninitiated, in this case, meaning myself, what is a firefly? Oh, you don't have a firefly? Next time I'll bring my firefly. I don't even know if I want you it. Don't it's know a about the, you don't even know about oh. the old it's a, song. It's an herb. Firefly. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 you know, that's kind of weird. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, packs and, and firefly. I don't need one of <laughs> so, so, you know, and we've been, you know, selling for the last... Um, I started this company two years ago. We did, you know, mm. some testing last year. We really started selling back in December, and we've been, you know, doing great. Um, but our, mm. our, and, and just Righteous. because you know, yeah. such support from people like you, yeah. from the community, uh, you know, as a whole, um, it's been absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, and we've been listening to our customers because they're like, number one, what took you so long? Why, <laughs> why, why didn't you, weren't you here, you know, five years ago? And they're full of ideas. And for then us. the most important question: What do I do with this cigar? You told them I was <laughs> <laughs> you told them, like, because I was making y'all wait. See, I was like, you know. I had to make y'all wait. But one of the first things that they said is, okay, we love it. Where's the travel case? Mm -hmm. Where's the smaller, you know, version where I can take two, you know, uh, strains and be on the go, take it over to a friend's house, take it to a party. And so we are debuting our travel case it's next beautiful. month. And we are super excited about it. Congratulations, sister. Thank you. So... And it's the same beauty, the same style that you're used to from Apothecary, you know, hardwoods, um, you know, uh, lined inside. It has the ability to hold two strain jars. 
and um, a beautiful four-part grinder. It also has space in there for, you know, all your pins. If you want to line those up, I've got, you know, a couple of vapes. I got my Pax Eras down there and another oil pin. Right here, you've got a, um, a pocket in the lid that gives you some, some more space to put. I've got some pre-rolls in there. I got some papers, um, a couple of extracts, everything I ready. really need while I'm on the go. The Apotho ready. And then it also has a... Um, a beautiful tray. So and what's that tray made of? Because it's such sexy this, material. This is, this is a, a sexy one. You know, I want to bite it. Like a chocolate bar. Coated. Pass yeah. it over here. Like, oh, yeah. Hey I man, know. don't finger it like that. I'm just. Like, <laughs> I just want to bite the edge. Don't okay. don't touch it on the edge. Yeah. I'm gonna bite the <laughs> chip out of that. <laughs> so you got your tray in there. So you literally have everything you need. You've got a tray. You got your two strains. You've got a grinder, um, and you've got all the toys. So you can take that with you on the go. It has um, a, a very. Uh, sophisticated um, you know uh, combination lock on the outside um, someone who's walking by has absolutely no idea what's in your case as they you know and they shouldn't because it's none of their business um, so you've got an ability to take everything you need to have a great smoking experience with you on the go um, and we're excited to premiere well I, I heard you Ecore, and I'm going to turn it around but I just okay. wanted to go show this booyah. part of it and um, Show you the attention to detail that's put into this. This is Apothecary, <laughs> um, and this is their branding and logo. Right. This is the back of this particular okay, tray that. for rolling and what have you. I see that. Uh, and anybody out there who's ever owned a Mercedes or <laughs> um, a BMW, uh, a Rolls Royce, uh, certain high-end cars, there, there's attention to detail in how things are stamped in. And I, I just wanted to show that because that's no small feat there to engrave your brand on the bottom of what is you know a, you know a boutique design rolling tray and mm -hmm. you know gathering area and <laughs> you know what i mean i almost want to i think bow sophisticated down to man it. i think Everybody sophisticated bow, bow your head real quick. <laughs> to this gold plant this is like a big Nigga, gold bouillon it's, it's, just amazing. it's made out of 14 karat gold the, so the box, is, the box is like <laughs> the box is like seventeen thousand. you know what i mean the detail you, you put I mean? into your products so we think that I wanted like, to acknowledge that. Thank yeah. you. We, it is an experience, you know, it, when you partake it of is. cannabis. Yep. Um, and it shouldn't feel compromised. There's something compromised about smoking out of a shoebox. There's something compromised about right. keeping your medicine. A little bit. An album cover on an album cover on a CD like, case. You know, exactly. I'm talking about being a road on a CD case. I'm like, let that CD have its <laughs> home back and, and come to my website. Exactly. <laughs> Spend some time with Apothecary. <laughs> I know. The CD that lost its home. You know? The new box <laughs> is absolutely the travel case is just amazing yeah i like it um i like the big box though and again when it comes to attention to detail i want you to hold up one of the um jars again right and um push that a little closer to this camera um we won't be able to see it that much and no 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 that's cool no that, that's not gonna work yeah it's the same distance but on the jar you have a label mm -hmm. Apparently, that label is like whiteboard. You can wipe it off. Absolutely. And you've Rewritable. taken the time Rewritable. to also include a marker mm -hmm. wherein you can actually write down Absolutely. the name of the strain. Because and um, Indicor Sativa, right? Because, because, stickers on because there. you want to know what you, that's, you know, to me, I equate this to alcohol. You know, you want to know, you wouldn't just drink any old thing that somebody right. gave you a, a drink of. Speak for yourself. You know, uh, like, uh, <laughs> I don't drink for I'm taste, like, I drink for effect. There, there's a difference between <laughs> the plastic bottle of Pop-Off and the very nice Speak bottle of Grey Goose. Right. Taka. <laughs> And, you know, uh, that's the yeah. way that cannabis is. You know, you want to know what you're smoking. There's, right. an, uh, there's an occasion for this sativa versus this indica versus mm -hmm. this hybrid. Yeah. Um, and you want to be thoughtful about it. You don't just pop open every, any bottle of wine. You think about what you're eating. You I think about it. who you're sitting with. I you think it. about, you know, what the price point is. Exactly. That's the conversation that we need to be having now Where on have cannabis. have been all my life? <laughs> 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 like, it, it is an experience. Yeah. So this is yeah. just a part of that. Yeah, oh. you're right. And it is for connoisseurs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, true connoisseurs. Connoisseur can be found in every corner <laughs> of the land. Mm -hmm. Believe it. I don't care what you might see on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> Deep down inside of someone who uses cannabis for medicine and even recreationally mm -hmm. for the psychoactive properties of it, 
uh, on a Friday night. You know, just got paid. <laughs> Party, <laughs> homie. <Ow. laughs> eh, eh, eh. Smoke anyway. and trash. <laughs> so, um, anybody who really enjoys cannabis can enjoy this way of storing it. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the full blown, the, the, the Rolls Royce of the apothecary case is a way to, you know, keep it locked and secure. How this come also has its man? own. Oh, come on, man. Come, come here, Cadillac. Well, I mean, All right, Cadillac goes here. Back in the day, people... Cadillac is gold. I'm talking about platinum, homie. We're talking about platinum. You said the Rolls Royce, I mean, I come to be the Caddy, I mean. It's the Rolls Royce. He is from Detroit, I mean. All right, my bad. We both from there, you I do got a Caddy. Because earlier you said all the cars that say Caddy. I was feeling a little some kind of way. You kind of got me there, I was feeling some kind of way earlier. I just love that we're having this conversation. We never used to talk about the best way to store cannabis in the same way that, you know, people aren't talking now, like... How are you storing your meth? You know, because we were like, no, right. no, no, I just smoke it right when I get because, it. Because, Ain't no store that. Because, I'm you know, that now. because it was thought of as being that, that illicit. Part. Now we can have <laughs> these conversations. Yeah. Because, no, we don't do that. Um, you know, because when cannabis is dry, you know, that's when you're coughing all the time, when you're mm. when it's hitting different. And, you know, people really don't right. realize. Oh, I'm coughing. This no. must be the good stuff. That's not the good no, stuff. That's, that's the, the dry stuff. stuff. You, you've been had. You've been um, had. You know, bamboozled. You've got to be able, you know, at this day and age, that you know, the information is out there. You can have a better smoking experience. People yeah. think you're just supposed to cough. No, you're smoking things that are not good. You're right. <laughs> Make they sure that you're your keeping it. back there. You know, knocking them back. All cannabis isn't good. Can I don't want, you know, a four-day-old, you know, uh, Beer that's been left open. Oh, <laughs> so why am I sitting around I, smoking this know four a, day old you know joint? I mean, I'm just, I'm <laughs> just right. saying. You know, that's think right. about these across the board. These, exactly. you know, I think that there's quality mm -hmm. out there, and this is the conversation that, as adults, as you know, people yeah. who are legally able to use this plant, why aren't we having these conversations? Why should I be ashamed? It's very grown and sexy. Right. In what you need? What you put your? What you put your rocks in? What you put your rocks in? Like shit, man. They don't even make it to no jobs, boy. I'm always getting them. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate this, especially because when in our classes we talk about mindful consumption. And so it's always about, particularly when you're talking about, okay, what is it that you're smoking for the type of experience mm -hmm. you want to have? Right. So when you're talking about meditation and yoga or anything where you're, you're you know, talking about your health and wellness, you want to be mindful of what the experience is going to be like Absolutely. for you. So you being able, yeah, being able to like note and document what you're smoking and then also understanding like what you're doing that with then yes. what did you do then how was your experience how right, did that right. feel for you exactly. so that you can now go in next time you so get your herbs this. you I know what you're doing right, right exactly I mean, exactly because you pulled out a carnival earlier you made up a carnival earlier yeah, yeah. that was tasting good <laughs> We treat ourselves the same way. I mean, yeah, exactly. I have, you know, I don't want to drink tequila, but I like gin and I like this and exactly. I like these other things. You know, it, uh, in that same way, mm -hmm. there's, you know, different plants treat me different exactly. ways. If I'm feeling anxious, I know I should take, you know, something like this. Exactly. Or if I've got some physical body pain, I want to take something that's more CBD. Exactly. You know, those are the things that we're starting to have these conversations yeah. about. And you should be writing down. Yeah. Rich, made a big, Rich yeah. made a big point a while ago. We had a discussion because of the hood. I always wanted like, give me that gas, give me that right. gas. And they want this one taste. If it ain't that one smell or whatever, they're like, yeah. nah, that ain't it, that ain't yeah. it. Yeah. And he's like, well, look, when you go to, I mean, the uh, drugstores or whatever, they got more than Aleve. You know? right. They got more than Advil. Right. Yeah. Right. They got more. Right. <laughs> so I kind of meds out there. Absolutely. But, they, but yeah. you're not being educated. Everybody got this ding, one ding, ding, level yeah. of tree that they smoking. Yeah. But in the same token, you got to cater to your market. Right, you know? exactly. Every drink but isn't Jack and Coke. No, so it's not. I'm like, it is not. <laughs> broad now. Hennessy and Coke, you know? You, uh, you ain't lying yeah. about that. And I think that that comes also, I'll say, so I'm relatively new to L.A. I've been out here for a year uh, and change. Oh, and it's <laughs> <you know what? laughs> well, Won't you and shout your hometown is, if you... I'm from if, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Very nice, Tulsa. thank you. Uh, also Tulsa, lived Tulsa. in New York and Paraguay, South America. Shout out mm -hmm. all the homes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> love, it. love all around the globe. All the ghettos. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> See them. And so nah, now man. L.A. is, you know, my new home. And... Uh, well. But I will say <laughs> that there's part of it comes with the maturity and your use of it and where you live and the access. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so into the, making it more accessible for people because the quality and the types and all those things that 
affect the experience is where, like Preach. you said, the conversations are going, where we're headed with our use. Because if we're now saying, okay, it's beneficial, it can help me. So, okay, we need to be just as mindful as we are with any other thing we put in our bodies mm -hmm. with this plant as well, especially yes. because it is so powerful yes. and it can be so great. You so how can we do the best with it? You know it's important mm -hmm. with that, though, because we are the generation right now mm -hmm. that as we get older, and uh, we we are the crusaders, right? Exactly. Because right now the kids under us, because we fighting so hard yeah. for it, the kids under That's us are not example. the kids they're under us right now. Us. But but right, right. but they're not seeing us all the way because it's still kind of hidden. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's taboo that still. Still taboo. Too, right. We gotta. We still. We supposed to really be able to just like. Cause I've been watching a lot of those uh, 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 weedy kid type of shows, mm -hmm. and you know, you see them, them, them farmers up there. They blowing trees and the babies and everything right there. And yeah, they, you know, it's not like and it's I'm not blowing trees on my baby. Don't, no, they're not <laughs> blowing them on them. They're not blowing them on them. But it's like it's like it's nothing. They're not like they're not hiding. They're not hiding. They're, they're, they're not hiding. They don't have the guilt, exactly. The guilt and the shame that's associated. Don't smoke that right there. The kids right there. It's not like that. But can I say this before we go to the break? All day long, smoking cigarettes. Right. Can I say this before we go to break? Can I say this before we go to break? Because we got to get to the break. Take a little time. Pause. 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 Pause.
You kicked up, let me hold something. I blow it out, then we smoke something. And we can keep it on the low. And don't nobody need to know nothing. Now let's smoke. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk.
Watching the show all this time, it's way high it yet. Is. There's something wrong watching the marijuana just have a show. Something is most definitely wrong with your nerd ass if you ain't blowing watching this show. You did. So, uh, welcome us back, why don't you, my brother? Oh, we back live on the marijuana just every Friday at 420 Pacific Standard Time on your LATalkLive.com browser dial. Everything we do here is really re- uh, radio, it's reality radio on Handcraft for your listening and viewing pleasure. So, Whatever happens, happens. All this is freestyle off the top of my dome anyway. It's all about just having your verbiage right. Even if I bumble over words, I told you this is reality radio. Hair and credit for your listening and viewing pleasure. So if I fuck up, then I fuck up. Then you see it. So what? And then I get back on track. And then we there. But the, the thing is, I work hard to not fuck up. So that I won't fuck up. But I am still imperfect because I am human. But one thing about it is, we get blown. You I think he just answered the question to the <laughs> words of Nate Dog in the background. Mr. Grimm, Endo Smoke, are you high yet? Yes. <laughs> it yes. is officially 614 on the West Coast, 914 on the East Coast, and everything in between. And you're intelligently tuned to tonight's live episode of The Marijuologist, the world's only show that explores the global impact of cannabis on California and the entire world. Um, Richard Carr, E. Quarter Wolf, Whitney Beatty, and Jonna Johnson joins us in Chi Town's finest. What's up, main man? Dre Scholas. That's what I call my people, Dre Scholas. Dre. Don't worry, your probation officer saying it's not going to be. Nay, nay, you are good. <laughs> yeah, your lady already told us. She yeah. said, yeah, we got to keep it cool. Because we playing all this crazy ass music and. You know, there's smoke in the air, but the smoke you see in the air, ladies and gentlemen, is actually sage. It's sage. <laughs> it's sage. up. We're saging it's out the sage. Sage. Yeah. the sage of life. Yep. All yeah, right. We- so welcome back to the show. We're in overtime here on the Matter Wallet. Having a good time with these ladies. Having a heck of a time. Yeah. Having I'm a having time. a good old time. Yeah. yeah. It's always a good time, man, here on the Marijuana. We didn't get oh, fiance hey. name. What's fiance name over there? Nia. 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 Yo, you did say it earlier. You did say Nia. Nia in the building. Nia. Cousin Nia, Chicago's <laughs> finest. Is that what it in? Chicago's yeah, finest. Rousing building. round of applause. Yeah. They said they gonna move out here to LA Nate now. Dog <laughs> they they dog said they back moving the out here. For you. Get them chips ready though. Have them yeah. chips ready. We've been here. listening to all the West Coast music, <laughs> riding down these streets, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, because you're on the West Coast. Because cannabis is so prohibited on the East Coast, oh, there really isn't a lot of yeah. cannabis-inspired music Man. from the East Coast. Give him something else, Rich. Give him something else. You can't uh, <laughs> just drive down the street uh, with some weed on your... Give him some of that... Uh, no, all right, hold no, on. Which no, is crazy. What's crazy. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. No, What's worry the big fella name? No, I got it. Don't worry about it. But back to this uh, studio <laughs> and back to you guys live, I want to talk more about women in the cannabis industry because... I think one thing we haven't covered enough or at least expressed enough or maybe I dozed off or passed out. But let's talk about the future uh, of the cannabis industry for women and in particular for black women. Because, you know, we've been doing this show since 2009, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Wow. Since August of 2009, we've been doing the marijuology. We're the anniversary. Right? Wow. wow. So. I love it. And I've been totally depressed by the fact that I, I see, or at mm-hmm. least in that in the past, I, I felt that we were so underrepresented in the industry. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd go down to city council for the big city council meetings mm-hmm. when they were deciding whether to 
uh, reduce the industry from the 1,000 cannabis yeah. dispensaries that had blossomed in L.A. Mm -hmm. down to a, back to the original 187, 186, some say. Mm -hmm. I saw all this stuff evolving. Um, but I never saw a lot of black people involved with yeah. the industry. No. When I would go no. down to city council, when I would go to Oaksadam, when it was on San Vicente, right across from the Beverly Center, Oaksadam University, mm -hmm. in case mm -hmm. you all don't know, is yeah. like, you know, one of the premier, you know, Canada's yeah, sure. education universities right. in the mm -hmm. country based out of, you know, the Bay Area, but they had a, a, a school down here and I'd right. go to the meetings and this is why I learned so much. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that smart. But I, you know, do learn. I don't have a learning disability. That's the smartest thing that you smart. said all night. <laughs> so I've seen all this stuff evolve, but, you know, how's it play out for ladies now? You know, yeah. and, and what's the future of that? And I want you to inspire somebody, and now the mic is Yes, yours. I am very encouraged. I will have to say, when I first got to L.A., I got a lot of pushback when I was interested in um, getting into the cannabis industry. It was always just like, there's a lot of voices that it's like, oh, it's so hard, You're not, it's black people can't get in, you know, mm -hmm. basically, right? Mm -hmm. um, but being mindful, you hear it from people who have I knew they were seeing it right? behind my back. <laughs> But, but then well, exactly. once once I put a foot in, another foot like, in, I'm, prove them wrong. I'm meeting so many dope, beautiful women, people of color who are starting businesses, who are creating spaces and communities and streams of income and spaces of healing and self-care that is just so empowering. It's so um, and it's 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 just like my experience with cannabis. I mean, it's it's such a journey, right? And it's it's such a opportunity to kind of express yourself more wholly and being part of it so far. And I'm still very green in this industry, right? Green. Um, That's to be like. <laughs> How green and are I'm you? enjoying it. It's exciting. <laughs> I'm so green um, because because it's allowing me to see the opportunities more because there's so much of the uh, the work is being done like it's it's happening right. it's a process and it's been happening over years you know what i'm saying um california and la is a very unique place in this industry right because there's so much history and culture with it but yet we're still you know kind of behind when you're when you're talking about the legal side of it i mean right. there are states where they already have a booming <laughs> industry regulated and all this we're doing it but Proving. we you know we're in the thick of it right it's happening but we you the know are turning. yeah so i, I just want to remain optimistic and i want us to realize that work is happening and that we have to continue to support the work that's happening mm -hmm. um, and be vocal about it as much as we can, especially those of us, like you said, there's people obviously who are in industries who, you know, that's not their center thing. So right. for us, it's, it's about being the voice for those who enjoy, appreciate, and um, can honor this plant in a way that is productive for right. their lives and for society. And Whitney, that's right in your house. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. For the, I was going to say that for yep. the Whitney Beatty's mm -hmm. out here, yeah. Jenna Johnsons, and the the women yeah. above ground, the wag, you know, yeah. 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 It's in the it's house. a lot of love. Yeah, I, I think that there is, you know. <laughs> There's just such opportunity for us yeah. women if we band together exactly. and stand up right now. Um, and I can see it happening all over town. I mean, I was a, um, a panelist um, and a mentor for the um, Cannabis Women's Business um, uh, Summit that they had a few weeks back um, that had you know hundreds of women come out who are interested in starting businesses, who have businesses in the space to allow us the opportunity to to not only to network but to you know to mentor each other, to bring yeah. each other into the fold, to be able to move forward in this industry together. The cannabis space has so many women in it right now because yeah. they there were not you know this wasn't an old industry. There weren't stalwarts there. There wasn't as many deep pockets there. There right. wasn't as you know lower barriers to <laughs> entry. Um, and so we've got to take advantage uh, right now and make sure that people understand that this is going to be, you know, an uh, industry where, you know, uh, women and men are going to play ball equally. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, for as a woman and then as a woman of color, it becomes even, you know, more important to me um, to see people play <laughs> play ball and to understand that. In order to be in the cannabis space, you do not have to be a grower. Right, I'm right. not asking yeah. you to quit your job in HR to come and grow <laughs> cannabis. Trim, yeah. What I'm telling you is that they have HR, you yep. know, jobs yep. in cannabis. You can provide yes. your services. In Absolutely, this we need do doctors, um, ancillary companies, ancillary yep. companies. We need accountants. We need CFOs. We need product designers. We need, yep. you know, uh, programmers. We need people across the board. So take yep. that skill set that you already have and walk over to this cannabis space where it is wide open, where we know that 
this, we have not even reached close to where the peak is, yeah. you can set something up for yourself yeah. um, that is a long-term <laughs> opportunity. That yep. is a long-term play. Whitney, yes. you speak from an, an incredible background in corporate America. Yeah, and do, yes. for our first-time tuners tonight, because every time we have new people who come to the studio, they always invite people to come, and all they got to do is go to latalklive.com and <laughs> take it to America Talk Live. Dot com. Look at you in live and living color. <laughs> Y'all look. Say hi to your mamas in there. <laughs> All right, look. Hi, mom. Number but one, that number said, one. you come from an incredible background in corporate America. So Thank for you. our first time tuners or people tuning in for the night for the first time, can you do you feel comfortable enough to talk about your corporate background? Yeah, I mean, I I come from a completely you know, mm. my background's not cannabis at all. I have an undergrad degree mm -hmm. in theater uh, with a minor in art history. I got a master's degree in mm. film production um, from Loyola Marymount University. Um, I worked my way up in the entertainment industry. In my last job, I was a senior vice president of development. I developed reality TV show and branded mm. content, sold it to networks, um, and you know, uh, walked shows through that whole process. And I still love of that business um you know and i still do things in that business and as far as i'm concerned apothecary is is you know a lot of part yeah. of what i do there is in mm -hmm. that business that's yeah. why i stepped over here right. it wasn't because i was like oh i'm gonna step off and be a farmer i can't keep a fern alive that's not me <laughs> uh, but what i can do is keep i know real, I, I know branding yeah. right. i know this lifestyle space i know this yep. demo i developed tv shows for them i know what they want i know who these people are yep. um and i was like i can build something for a, a demo in this space that is not being tr you know answered to but every smoker that I know mm -hmm. has a job. You know, every smoker that I know uh, is, is a responsible member of their community. I'm talking lawyers and doctors, and these are the people that, you know, that, that are thought of as upstanding right. citizens in this community, but, right. but did not have a place in this cannabis industry. And so part of what I wanted to do is build that out and, you know, you know give them the products that will make them, you know, feel more... Uh, comfortable in that space, but I also want to highlight that they're there, and that's what I do by you know letting people know, hey, this is my background. Hey, I've got a, a child. Hey, you know I've got all these things going for me, and I use cannabis. Um, I want you to see me because I want you to know that because I'm here. Exactly, I'm here too. I'm in this space too. Exactly. And yes, what you think I'm about us is wrong. Right. Yes, I'm a corporate. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, yes, my know. mind is on tight. Mm -hmm. My yeah. brain all, all I'm that. focused. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. discipline. No, Absolutely. I don't drive and smoke. No. <laughs> No, Unless I don't do drugs. It's on the 405, like, and the 405 is stuck. <laughs> stuck. And I can <laughs> sneak a toke or two. I got a vape pen. Yeah. Lord, I need a that, little hit. Well, got that's got why I get, <laughs> I get so offended when I see people, you know, uh, talking so poorly about mothers who yeah. would ever use Thank cannabis, you. Yeah. Right. where, you know, but. But the idea of moms and wine or wa moms oh, and drinking yeah, yeah. is, oh, oh that's cool and that's, no, that's fun. Acceptable. And, Canadian yeah. and nobody is running off to the side of the house Ricky? to drink that Y'all don't beer. even know right. Ricky give me a glass, couple hey. glasses out the cup. I used to, my mother used to send me down the store with 35 cents. I'd buy her a pack of Salem <laughs> <See>? cigarettes. <laughs> See? She's talking about. Let's talk about. The, you know, right. Right. So, and things. I'm talking about when I was a preteen. I ain't talking about. By the time I got into my teens, I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore, mom. Right? <laughs> you shouldn't smoke, mom. I'm right? not doing it for you anymore, mom. That's over that was with. So no, but <laughs> and she didn't stop. <laughs> she kept smoking. Well, I mean, but those are the conversations it's I think real. are worthwhile it because it really those people are going to wake up with a hangover, and yeah. I'm just going to be, exactly. you know, yeah. I'll be just. Fine. I'm just going to be enjoying life. You, uh, uh, and my back pain is going to be gone. You yeah. can smoke as much <laughs> cannabis all day until you just be like, you know what? I don't feel like smoking no more because I'm hungry to eat. And then as soon as you eat, you'll throw another one right back in the air. Or wake up tomorrow to start all over again. There's no overdosing. You can't do There's that no off. Of, you can't do that off of alcohol. I'm like, yeah. it's taking me like three or four days if I get like that, like yeah, plastic stuff like that. So, oh my I mean, god! Yeah. I think that messaging is getting out there. I think yeah, people are sure. understanding now More than that ever, we are not, no you know, what you should be worried about. You know, when I've got Obama saying that, you know, that alcohol and tobacco are more dangerous. I think that people yeah. understand that. You know, the real, you know, we want to talk about drug. And don't get me wrong, there are drug problems in this country. Mm -hmm. It's called the opioid. Epidemic. Exactly. Yeah. And so, if we want to take time to, to play that game, let's have that conversation. Right. Yeah. May um, cause heart murmurs. May I, cause know? bloody oil discharge. Yeah. Yeah. But see, <laughs> may cause foot splitting. Sweaty eyelids. You know may cause but, right sweaty palms. So, but my plan doesn't so deserve to be a schedule one drug. So, right. Is all exactly. I'm saying. We don't deserve to be a schedule one drug. That's not fair. Yeah. And that's <laughs> what Cory Booker's legislation is about. Absolutely. And props yeah. to Senator Cory Booker. Yeah. Big ups to New Jersey, the jurors. I love that city. I have family in Newark. <laughs> I've partied in Newark. In fact, I probably smoked my first J <laughs> in the bricks, baby. Really in Newark. 
big ups to the bricks now that I think about it. That's funny. Glad I'm not on camera when I said that. <laughs> um, but um, Cory Booker's legislation is really all about that. Like, yeah. like I said, that federal legalization of the whole plant, the whole cannabis thing, mm -hmm. the retroactive impact it could have, yeah. the financial in impact it could have, mm -hmm. the ecological impact. People forget about the ecology. Yeah. You know, you can plant cannabis uh, in uh, nuclear radiated hmm. uh, earth waste, meaning like dirt where like a nuclear bomb exploded and yeah. you can't do nothing else with that dirt for like a billion years. <laughs> if you put some hemp seeds in that earth, it will regenerate the earth wild, and make man. it usable again. See. I mean, the yeah. human body has a built-in endocannabinoid system. Yeah. Yes, I did say indo, not outdo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that means that your body has, y'all know this, natural receptors <laughs> that, you know, when you smoke it, it just makes you feel. Yeah. But you, you also talked about the money. Giggly. And, and the money is real. Right. I think that that's an important part to play in all of this. When you look at, they say that the state of Colorado sells less cannabis than the city of Los Angeles. Uh, so wild. let's talk about what the economic that's impact is going to be when those taxes start to come in. I think we read... And, a billion in sales yeah. and 200 million yeah. in tax revenue. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And I then think you, that's what we read I last mean, week. Uh, Vegas just went up, um, you know, wreck and $3 million in sales in three days. Um, I mean, wow. there is such an opportunity in a time where our schools have less funding than ever before, that our teachers are getting paid less than ever before, that there is an opportunity here with this tax money to really make some differences mm -hmm. in our, yeah. you know, community. Really, there, yeah. You know, the money is, is going to roll in. It's our job to make sure that it's going to it's the right places. In. And, you it know, is. and it's really not is. only... It's cash, it's jobs, it's opportunity, yeah, it's revitalization it. of communities. You talk about where all these grows are going into, mm -hmm. you know, b buildings and out, you know, places that w weren't being used before. Right, right. There's just opportunities across the board. Yeah. Don't play us. Well, all right? the, right? So many right. levels. It's people that, are, people that, that, aren't even, not, aren't, that aren't even involved in the cannabis uh, mm -hmm. movement are making money off of it. Like you said, the people who own property, you know, they yeah. real estate facilities. is real a real huge estate. space of Come this, on, man. you know? Yeah. It's everything. And anything mm -hmm. yeah. that you could imagine. Yeah. yeah. That's another thing I want to ask. Let's talk say. about yeah. your service. Yeah. It, especially about being women in cannabis. It's so much creativity in the space because it's new. There's not so much, you know, strict laws or strict rules already outlined for what businesses are supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. So we're really creating what it's going to look like, especially when you're talking about regionally and locally. Like in L.A., of course, it's going to have its own vibe. And so you have a lot of these businesses and entrepreneurs like, um, like yourself here and like this business here with Royal Purple House really creating spaces where you can kind of play with it in yourself, especially as the legal side is still unfolding and before may us. I interject <laughs> that you are yeah. in fact a Columbia University <laughs> graduate. Can we that say that? That is true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to rep your yeah. alma mater? Yes, Columbia University. Yes. Stand up. And Man, it's funny because it, you talk about <laughs> You talk about going from corporate to cannabis. Um, yeah, my first job, even while I was there and right after it was at Goldman Sachs, I was in corporate finance, right? Um, you know, didn't stay there for too long, but the point is, is that you have these different people with backgrounds, with experiences, with talents, and with skills that can bring to this table as well. Because it's legitimate, it's growing, Absolutely. there's money, there's responsibility too in it for those who are creating it. Now, so, yeah. I didn't know about the Goldman Sachs part of it, and yeah. I've <laughs> often got, no big deal, uh -huh. I've, we're not going to throw you out. I lost a little money. <laughs> Hurt a little bit. Hey. I didn't like it a lot, but it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. I'm going to immediately pass this. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but when you talk about the fact that you've had this perspective, this view mm -hmm. from a higher, mm -hmm. you know, viewpoint, mm -hmm. and you look at this industry, mm -hmm. you know, from whatever level you see it at, yeah. and having the professional finance background yeah. that you have, yeah. Uh, I get guff about calling it an industry because people are like, well, you can't even ship it across the state lines. <laughs> like, well, you don't need to. You can yeah. grow it right in your own damn state, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Virtually any damn way. Uh -huh. um, would you agree that this is industrial level big business? Yeah. And right? the, the, the other piece that I have to say, um, as far as especially with my cannabis use, I talk about how it just uh, elevates 
our internal function. So our imagination, what you you're asking these questions about what we envision for the cannabis industry. I like this is real. Like especially when you smoke, when you're using cannabis, you have these ideas and you're thinking about big images right and it's more about where we are today because we recognize that we're moving that we're going somewhere so it's a matter of okay so what is it that we want to create how do we want it to look and how do we make it in such a way that it is respectable that we are responsible and that we are creating new images uh, that counter this idea that this is actually detrimental for us. Right. right? Stoners. Exactly. Potheads. Exactly. Right. Weedheads. Exactly. And so we're creating new images. Uh, we're, you know, we got to be the example so that it can build and continue to develop because uh, we're in that development stage, especially as it's and spreading. And we are the developers. Exactly. Aren't we? We, are the developers. we are the developers. We are the developers. And so the it other big piece is, here. yeah, making it accessible. So when you have products like this where it's like, okay, I'm not going to just smoke anything off the tree and I want to know what it is I'm smoking. I'm new to cannabis. I've heard all this stuff about cannabis, mm -hmm. but I need to be able to, you got to come with me with something more than, yeah, like a dime bag, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little backyard. So, right, right. Mm -hmm. right, right. I got that chronic. Oh, no, I just tell you some shit like, oh, it's, right. good. Oh, it's good. Right. Yeah. That chronic headache. Like, I don't want nothing else yeah. to add. Oh, it's to good. And it, it's like you said, knowing the consumers, being in LA and the city of people who, you know, you have money, you have jobs, you have responsibilities, but this is something that can aid you in all of that and the creativity and the balance of it all and how you think about it the kindness to yourself all these things right and so it's how we present the cannabis stuff to it and then even with the meditations and all that that's that's another just entry accessible point for people you already have people who are seeking greater connection with themselves right people who are feeling like uh i don't know you know all these mental internal battles right and so with yoga and all these other movements that are growing organically anyway when you make cannabis more accessible in these ways it allows for that, you know, that curiosity to be peaked a little bit, right? Mm. And so you're not pressuring people to smoke and it's not, it's, you know, it's more so them coming like, you know, what is this all about? Mm. How can I use it to help me? Um, but we are the responsible ones of how we present it and how we engage with people. As advocates. As advocates. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. That is our advocacy. That is our advocacy. People talk about freedom and yeah. I keep telling people freedom ain't free. And right. here's why in the first degree that freedom ain't free. And I don't even mean to rhyme, but sometime <laughs> I do it. <laughs> hold on. Bars. Hold on, hold on. Bars. Bars. Richard Bars. <laughs> anyway, hold on. The first responsibility of freedom is self-discipline. Mm -hmm. The moment you get free, and everybody know this, the moment you got your um, frisky ass to college, as hmm. uh, soon as you got out your mom and them house, <laughs> you like, let me explore. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then yep. you realize... <laughs> Either, mm -hmm. you know, through hook or crook, mm -hmm. freedom ain't free mm -hmm. because you learn to, you have to pay bills. Yep. You have to be responsible. Yep. Right. So self-discipline is the first. Self-discipline. The, that's the first credit card charge on freedom. When you get that freedom credit card, like, oh, I'm free. <laughs> it's a credit card. No, it's not. Because <laughs> cut that, that first little rub on that card, mm -hmm. that bill going to come due. Yeah. We know that. The same thing applies to us as advocates, as Absolutely. patients first. Yeah. As recreational users, secondarily, yeah, absolutely. Um, I found my path in cannabis through recreational use, but then I found validation through medicinal use. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, I got a wreck because <laughs> 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 yeah, like, I had been buying cannabis all my life. <laughs> uh, exactly. When I was six years old, I was on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, go to the side door. Hey, the side hey, door. Knock on the side door. You got that chronic. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a couple <of> times. <laughs> Levity aside. <laughs> Um, you're too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I realized in that pathway um, that the medical part was valuable to right. me. It wasn't that I was just doing it because it made me feel good. It was because I was feeling good for doing it, feeling better, mm -hmm. feeling more youthful, more mm -hmm. vibrant. Mm -hmm. All of those things mattered. Mm -hmm. So, again, when you look at this whole industry and all of the areas that it touches and again in your case where it comes down to meditation mm -hmm. and the fellowshipping of cannabis right. which i think has been lost yeah you know uh it is way beyond just smoking herb and getting high mm -hmm. and being a pothead and you know hey i know somebody got some good weed and <laughs> blah 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 it is really really incumbent upon us as users to at least be advocates right 
For sure. Absolutely. For Take sure. on that responsibility sure. of representing Education. it correctly. Yep. Absolutely. Show the diversity that's out there in the industry. Yep. And that's why I really enjoy that these spaces too. Yeah, involved. because you get all these people with all their backgrounds and they're used to smoking by themselves, right? They're used to just hiding it as well. They're used to yeah, kind of the just, cannabis closet. Yeah, that's in the, the cannabis the closet. Cannabis. It's really <laughs> real. Again. And so you have spaces, even like the Emerald Exchange, and you have events and you have places where you can not only just talk about it openly and intelligently, but also you can consume it safely in community and you know, in a space that's open for that. So well, I like your mother's yeah. looking at you. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right, right. Whitney, <laughs> I saw you on that <laughs> radio show Exa last night, exactly. child. You know, <laughs> you on there talking about them herbs. Every every time I do, you know, stuff like this, you know, there will be somebody um, from my Facebook past who yeah. will be like, <laughs> "What are you doing? Yes, save you yourself. You yeah. You're doing yeah. the most. You yeah. know, you know <laughs> Jesus didn't smoke no weed. Oh my. Yeah. Like, All I know is it grows from the ground. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah. It, and it is nothing more natural than this plant. And whereas you came in as from wreck, I came in as a med. Mm. I had no interest really in cannabis before. Mm. I, Nancy Reagan scared the crap out of me. She told me <laughs> right. to say no. I, I, was, I, I was she in was that. Her her standing behind her. I was behind her like, yeah, Nancy. <laughs> I'll <laughs> never do it. Never. Yep. Yep. <laughs> never want my brain to look like that on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, fried eggs. But I do like so, fried eggs. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I got to tell you, in the morning, I might wake and bake. <laughs> Smell of fried eggs, right. so it's not so bad. My doctor introduced me to cannabis. He introduced me That's to that dope. idea because That's I was really? on anxiety medicines that I did not like the after effects. So I didn't like how I was feeling. I didn't like that how clouded I felt. I didn't like the um, side anxiety, effects. Anxiety, anxiety. Absolutely. And they were, you know, she was like, well, why don't you try cannabis? And I was like, hey, what now? Right. You know, right. She could have just told me to go off and try something. <laughs> Hair right. on. Okay. I was like, I don't know what, you, what do you want from me. Right. <laughs> you know? I did not shit. know. Anything. But that made me do my my homework in earnest yeah. because I wanted to understand and I didn't want to be on yeah. you know Paxil or Lexapro for the rest of my Damn. life I really wanted to find something that worked for me and so yeah. when I think of cannabis I think first as medicine I think of the CBD mm. that I take you know in the morning and before I go to bed to make sure that you know I can stay off of the medicines <laughs> and that is you know important to me so yeah I can smoke a J when I have friends or what have you mm -hmm. or whatever but on a daily basis you know I'm not using you know psych it's not uh, you know I think mine is 20 to 1 mm -hmm. so it's not about the THC it's about right. the CBD it's not yeah. something that's going to give me a high feeling right. but it does the work <laughs> within my you know yeah. in my system necessary for me to be able to do what I need to do so for me that's it's medical and people you know and so I give it that respect. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Deep into overtime, and we've got some time left, I want to, you ladies to talk about the actual um, pain relieving aspect yeah. of it. Because, Whitney, you know more about that than I do. I'll, I, I'll openly admit that, man, I didn't start because I was in any kind of pain. In fact, <laughs> right. when I smoked, feeling good. as my mama used to say, I ain't feeling no pain. <laughs> right. Right. No pain. So I didn't do it for that. But yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to both of you ladies, I mean, what's that like in terms of pain relief when it comes to CBDs. Because, I mean, you know, I don't mess with no CBDs. <laughs> I mean, CBD is fantastic. I mean, and there's yeah. a lot of good research mm -hmm. and more being done every day about the benefits of CBD for, you know, everything from anxiety to panic attacks to, mm -hmm. you know, um, seizures to, I mean, the, the list is large. Goes, Even, oh, I mean, there's a full dog CBD yep. market. Yes, it is. Dog treats. All day long. Dog. Oh, yeah. all absolutely. All day long. Yeah. And has Relax. been found CBD to do water. amazing Dumb things with older dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, there's just so much, you know, I've seen what it does. Yeah. Or you look at on the other side, you know, women um, have, you know, been touting the benefits of companies like Foria who are doing yep. things like menstrual sexual cramps. Sexual health. Yeah. Menstrual cramps. Yeah, menstrual cramps. They got suppositories for menstrual cramps. They've got all sorts. And they've sorts. also got Tinnitus, a CBD, CBD disease. It'll change your life. Lubricant like out there yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah. Crohn's yeah. disease. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's for all that So, shit. you know, and I think that the key it here is, is the part that I'm disappointed and I'm hoping that our industry as a whole steps up to do more. I have disappointments okay. sometimes. And I think that we don't do a good enough job bringing, letting people who come into the space who are interested in this plant understand how to use it yeah. um, and the variety of ways in which yeah. they can mm. use it okay. um, and have You're more right. insights. You know, well, I'm having back pain. What would be good for that right. versus I'm having, you know, anxiety. You know, everyone's like, oh, anxiety. You probably, you know, take an indica. Well, indica doesn't work for me. Yeah. Right. So I had to do work to figure 
figure out where I should belong. And being able to, um, you know, walk into a dispensary and get that information is very difficult these yep, days. These every days. every bartender is, is not, gas, you know, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Smoke this gas right here. Yeah. But but you also have to think where you go. Yeah, and you have to think about the, you know. There's great dispensaries out there. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But on the other side, you know, you don't go to Jack Daniels and ask him, you know, yeah. what I should be drinking. That's um, true. Yeah. You don't go to the liquor store and like, hey, uh, yeah. uh, how's that uh, hey, lemon rum yeah. up there? We do have that's to educate like, ourselves, you, for you, sure. You've got to do that hey, work. Hey, yeah. uh, mm. Pull it off the shelf. Let me pop the cap. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No. right. You sniff yeah. it. Yeah. You know, no, that yeah. ain't right. No, go ahead. Let me hand it real quick. Roll up one. Roll up one. There's orgs coming up. You know, there's the Cannabis Nurses Association. There's, you know, different people really? having those conversations with patients and I think that that a cannabis is, nurses yeah. association yeah they, they are out there you know <laughs> people yeah. their supporters and you know and sharing this information and it's it's powerful stuff which is why I always tell people if you're interested in coming in this space do yourself a favor open up do a notepad research. on yep. your phone start to write down what you're smoking start yeah. to you know how did it make you feel even right. if you took easy notes you know i did uh, you know this kush it was a sativa i you know i bought it here and it made me feel like this yeah. those sort of things will help you learn more about yep. your body and how right. it reacts to cannabis don't go out you know it's a difference between drinking four cups of vodka and four <laughs> shots of vodka yeah. and you don't know Man. what what that is yep. until you start to do that work yeah that's exactly. a fact i wanted to kind of make that distinction earlier yeah whatever it is be it cigarettes alcohol um, cannabis, and I'm not even going to get into the other bullshit that's out there. <laughs> All right, I'm not even going to dignify that stuff. But um, the first time anybody ever had a drink, even if it was a bar mitzvah, a bat mitzvah, yeah. a backdoor mitzvah, <laughs> your homegirl mitzvah, a bat mitzvah, <laughs> you know, bat bat mitzvah. mitzvah, whatever it was, anybody who had alcohol for the first time, you know, it's like love. <laughs> You know, you drink a little bit, ah, oh, that feels good. Mm. You drink a little bit more because it feels good. And before you know it, you're in the back of the alley with <laughs> yeah. your, somebody holding your hair back <laughs> and you keep throwing yeah. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the same we thing with cannabis. You, there, yeah. there, there is this process yeah. of it. Um, no doctor prescribes um, full-grown aspirin, aspirins to right. babies. That's mm -hmm. why we got baby aspirin right. now, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, even when I was a kid, my mama knew if, you know, if I had any inflammation, yeah. aspirins or NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammation -inflam drugs, mm -hmm. NSAIDs, you know, aspirin, mm -hmm. they decrease inflammation. I'd only get it when I was maybe in a fever state. You know, babies have like fevers. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I yeah. remember them days when you get a fever, you could die. Yeah. <laughs> you could straight up die <laughs> from a fever. And so aspirin were those, you know, my mom would cut it in half. Yeah. The same thing applies to cannabis, yeah. and we must understand that. Yeah. And I think it's important, as I, you know, was wanting to get to earlier, that is our advocacy mm -hmm. is what makes or at least spans the bridge of knowledge to people out there who think that they can come and hang out with us tonight. Yeah. And, you know, get down like we get down and ain't going to go home with the head blown. <laughs> that's just how we do. Yeah, but that's not true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fact is, you know, you got to understand if, if, if you're a first time cannabis yeah. user, don't think that you can hang with the homeboy or the homegirl on the first I night. And you're going out and drink your usual amount of alcohol. No. Don't take so your first shot and you're yeah. at a frat yeah. party. Yeah. First of all, first of all, first of all, what we are now with the with the strange now. Anybody that's starting off with, with this new shit now, they coming in the game on some top yeah, shelf shit. Yeah. They didn't come in the game with us with the, all the Reggies and all yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Kill, kill. Yeah. But that's where I think they're having the From conversations the about microdosing, especially yeah, when you get to edibles, yeah. because there's some edibles out there, and, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Why do I need a hundred, you know, uh, milligrams, milligrams in, in this cookie? It's bite. There, there's yeah. no it's reason. Bite. <laughs> I, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to live. Yeah. Right. I'm like I've got things to do today well, and tomorrow. You might not get a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm let me say this. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Though, like I mean, a lot of people 
they want to, I mean, where we are now with it, because right. people want to be so drugged up and high, but a lot of yeah. people want to be so stoned off the off the trees, but they want to be like, they want to feel like they're on heroin, That's not, but don't yeah. want to say they want, but yeah. don't want to say they're on heroin, but they want to have that same feel like off the trees. Yeah. And that becomes an issue. And they yeah. like, this ain't the gas, it, give me it some It goes else. back to this the messaging, the though. Give me some that's the, yeah, that's the messaging. It's like, get as high as possible, right? That's what I'm we're used to hearing. That's, the thing. that's an important but point. The, but the idea is, and what I try to express as far as the messaging is, it's, you know, enjoy the experience. Understand what feels good for you because, like, yeah, yeah they all having have a brownie rides. doesn't sit well with everybody. They sure don't. Um, Some people have bad reactions to it. Yeah, absolutely. And they we have to dosing. understand that different ways of taking them affect dosing. you. Yeah, the affect you differently. Yeah. So you can smoke a joint and you'll feel it right away. But if you eat a brownie, and you're not going to feel it for, you know, a while. And you might feel it for a long, long time. And you might feel it for a long time, right? All, right? All, all so we have to, you. that comes with the education yes. and that comes with the mindful use of it. Don't, and, but that's with everything, that's you know? And that's yeah. what people say. I had a, I had a bad yeah, reaction exactly. off of it. Yeah. Well, well, be mindful of how you consume it, right? A, a connoisseur and an alcoholic. Yeah. You know, right. we've got a wine to respect those levels that are out there. You know, for me, I don't mess around with edibles you know, too much because mm -hmm. I don't like not knowing when those things are right. going to happen. I don't dab much. But if I do right. an edible, mm -hmm. I want it to be 2.5. Right. Can I do, you know, 2.5? Yeah. Five is, is about as much as I need yeah. right. in, in an edible. You know your body. Yeah. You but know that your number tape. means no nothing to somebody who's not in the space. Exactly. Right. We're talking about exactly. stuff because we understand it. Exactly. That, that means nothing to me. Well, that and, means and, nothing. And let's keep yeah. it real. Give me a piece. I'm going to eat it. A lot of people <laughs> yeah. who are using cannabis, particularly as they're introduced through medibles, as we like to call them, or edibles, medibles, mm -hmm. um, are, you know, like baby boomers. Yeah. yeah. I smoked when I was in yeah. college, or I smoked when I was in high school. I did not inhale. Right. But, so, yeah, let me try that brownie, because they yeah. feel that's safer. And I'm here to tell you, not. as a... Uh, Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, they don't understand milligrams. Right, <laughs> right. We understand ounces and pounds. Right, exactly, because you're working with the earth. Yeah, right. basically. Yeah. When you talk about milligrams and when people understand when you're really getting into that level mm -hmm. of cannabis uh, potency, mm -hmm. you're right. They don't know 10 to 20 yeah. to 100, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's 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 not just about the, the dosing as well, but it's, you know... Um, because I think edibles can be very valuable for people, especially they are. for they are. older people, people who aren't, you know, down with just smoking Shouldn't in general. Smoke. Exactly. Nobody yeah. should smoke cannabis. So, Nobody should smoke cannabis. <laughs> so, yeah, Let's it's, keep it's that just about There's another way. the education with it. Um, and, you know, making sure that you have the experience that you're desiring and that feels good for Can you. we go back one more time? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to wrap the show out. I know sure. you, you all got to go. We've, been, <laughs> we've kept you here. We're going on almost a three hour show, and I apologize for that. But. I want to go back to the meditation and yoga yeah. part yeah. of what you offer in your services. Let's yeah. First of all, you have a website, Facebook, yes. any of that and social stuff? Yes, and I'll say that stuff? real Put quick. That out there. So royalpurplehouse.com, all spelled normally, mm -hmm. Royal Purple House. That is where you can find our full calendar of classes. So you can find more of the class descriptions and everything, as well as other products. I have the essential oils burning in the air here, but we have our <laughs> <laughs> always yeah, when I come, yeah, right? Always bless the studio. Um, but, you know, that's part of our meditation and yoga space as well because that's part of that mind-body-spirit connection. That's more so about, you know, that emotional level. It goes through your bloodstream just as the cannabis does, and they really work together well and complement the practice of meditation and yoga. And so we actually have our class tomorrow. Um, the morning class is actually full, our meditation, but it's every Saturday, Good. so you can still go on the website and sign up for next Saturday morning. But our yoga class, we still have a couple spaces open for tomorrow evening. So again, royalpurplehouse.com. And there, we always have an open in Cypher. And what time is that class tomorrow Yeah, it's 7 to 9 Saturday We have evenings. a couple openings. Uh, yes, we do have a couple openings okay. left, but definitely RCP online. And um, we always start out with just settling in the place with some herb in the air then we get into the practice with yoga with Manelli and then that flows into a nice deep mindfulness meditation flow and there's cannabis throughout the night throughout the pro throughout the practice as well as edibles and other options for people healthy snacks great conversations great community great vibes so I can speak nice. for myself and I gotta say uh, yeah. Ecor, yeah, we might need to go over there as long yeah, as we gotta wear, no gotta come tights. Tomorrow. Can I wear my jeans we got yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I wear some loose I jeans heard, yeah. I wear, wear no comfortable tights. clothing hey, you should go over there because I'm yeah. telling you right I now. I want to do some to all the brothers out there. Yeah. <laughs> to, all, to all the brothers out there, to yeah. all you uh, blunt smokers, maybe yeah. this is another way. <laughs> 
to move away from your smoking blunts <laughs> right. and come to an environment and you're going to see some really pretty women. Yeah, I'm tell and you. I do have to say, we should go hang out there, our classes, there's Let's always that, men and that. women because, it is. yeah, it's, it's yeah. I mean, this is beneficial for us all. Right. And, um, and again, we got the blunts in rotation. We have the edibles. We have joints. We have bowls as well. We have different Whatever varieties like for throughout the practice and location yeah. to be announced it's location is when you rsvp right. online exactly. so definitely do that beforehand again it's tomorrow and you'll see all the details there when you go to royalpurplehouse.com you'll see classes and you'll see the whole calendar royalpurplehouse.com just the it. way it's spelled that's it yeah. very nice um, and we are Looking also on purple. instagram i'm actually on instagram live now so shout out to everyone there we have a great community building here in south la and around you know growing even beyond mm. Royal Purple House underscore on instagram so very nice yeah done. talk to me and I love to see you all there. I think what we need to do, uh, and because, you know, what we do here at LA Talk Live is produce, uh -huh. yep. um, is get uh, Whitney over there yes. and bring through her products see? and yeah. let's get that all Absolutely. set up and laid out. I was going to mm. say, yeah. the truth is, I'm also, that? yeah, because we do private meditation sessions as well. And that's definitely more intimate, but that would be perfect to just present the herb and practice for oh, the absolutely. evening in that private absolutely. setting as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, and you can definitely see that all Yeah, online as well, I do private meditations, and those are just love. So definitely get your meditation on, the holistic spirituality, all Yay. of it. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Yes. And what a better what better way to present your product yes. with Absolutely. the exactly. apothecary, the two R's box, a uh, case rather, apothecary case. What better way to present that into a, a target market of individuals? Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to really appreciate that. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's this is what this platform demo. is about, that's is bringing definitely. us together. You know, I, I, too, am very optimistic about what's about to yeah. happen next, both yeah. in America, in the black community, yep. and in the cannabis community sure. at large. You know, it's our turn. Excellent. I've been saying that for a lot of years, ever since we started this radio station back in 2009. Uh, I've been saying it's our turn. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's going to yeah. come a time. Last shall be first, first shall be last. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing that play out in front of our own eyes, but most importantly, when the last become first, how do you respond to that? Hmm. You know, if you ain't never been there before, hmm. oh, snap. Hmm. All this weight on my shoulders. Hmm. That's you know? where that mindfulness mm -hmm. comes in. That's Thank where tuning you. into yep. your spirit comes in and being guided by mm -hmm. truth, right? Mm -hmm. And let's do it with integrity. Let's do it in community. Let's do it for real. And very validating to have you on as well, Whitney. Um, as a sister who has spent so many years in corporate America in entertainment, bringing your product to connoisseurs like us yeah. um, and, you know, introducing it to other entrepreneurs like Jana here. But most importantly, give out details about yeah, the new box <laughs> and, of course, <laughs> the flagship, Absolutely. the Rolls Royce. <laughs> The Maybach so, music <laughs> part. <laughs> so Apothecary is available online. We're at www.theapothecary, A-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-R-Y. Double case. R. Dot com, Royce. The apothecary case dot com. You'll find us there. You'll be able to check out our classic case. Please sign up for our mailing list so you can find out when the uh, travel case drops. We're also on Facebook as the apothecary. We're on Twitter as the apothecary. Uh, we are on Instagram at apothecary. So please, you know. Um, follow us, check us out. I love to have these conversations. I love yeah. to be able to share our product and mostly, you know, also be able to talk with other like-minded people. Mm -hmm. um, I love being able to have these you know, I think that within the cannabis community, we have a lot of these conversations amongst ourselves, but we don't get to have it on a, a greater scale. Yeah. yeah. Um, so sure. I think that these conversations that. are important. So the work that you're doing here is so important. You both are that. dynamos Absolutely. in the industry. I'm telling you, <laughs> Big you are pioneers <laughs> in the industry. This radio station started with a show called The Marijologist, and then people built around that show. It became like a mushroom wow. cloud. But in the end, the roots and culture of the station really is rooted in this medical cannabis movement back yeah. then, industry now. Uh, yeah. The culture has been there uh, for aeons, not just years, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. score, mm -hmm. century, mm -hmm. but eons of time yeah. cannabis has been here. Absolutely. And yeah. now with mummies. it's <laughs> our exactly. turn. Right. Yeah. Because it's going to be here, too. And as advocates, so. <laughs> our responsibility <laughs> to get with the program is step into those voids yeah. where we see they exist 
and become the new entrepreneurs of this industry. Absolutely. That's really the absolutely the largest struggle, I think. This is the opportunity to build, you know, to build something real. Yeah, you know, for this, sure. And, you know, in communities to build wealth, to br- yep. you know, to build opportunity yep. um, out in, in this industry. So please don't sleep on it. We are a real business. Yeah. Um, come do business with us. One more time, Let's your website. The apothecarycase.com. That Double is R. T-H-E-A-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-R-Y case.com please come check us out yes yeah one more time the website all the social yes. networks so. royalpurplehouse.com royalpurplehouse all spelled normally dot com you can check out our class special there you can check out private sessions and book with me on there you can check out our shop get some essential oils and other things and join us for class tomorrow evening yeah, in give Inglewood give some details about that yeah. they've got an RSVP <laughs> tell them how yeah just go to royalpurplehouse.com you'll see the um, on the menu link for classes um, it's August 19th. You'll see the, all the classes, but you can just click on the class for tomorrow, evening, 7 p.m. Once you RSVP, you can, um, you'll can you get an email with the exact location. It's a private studio in Inglewood, a beautiful space that we are able to use, safe smoking, safe community. And so, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you. I enjoy always the community, the conversation, the space. So, yes. I want to thank you both so much for coming on tonight. We've been here for a long time. <laughs> Dynamo. Wow. Thank you. Thank um, you. Always. Me. We've got Shot Town's finest yes. in the house. What's up, Shot Town? You got some here. shout outs you want to give? Yeah, shout out to the Shot Town. <laughs> South Side. That's what that is. South Side. Shirek. James over there back in the studio with yeah. us. Mr. White Castle. Cousin Nia over there from the Shot. <laughs> want to thank Dan for Castle? calling in tonight as well. Yeah. You still like White Castle? Ain't nothing, like wrong, white ain't nothing wrong with a white castle. Yeah, ain't never uh, I, see, I stop there as soon as I get to the off the airplane. I, my first stop is white castle. <laughs> is there a black man or woman in the studio tonight? Don't know who white castle is. Oh my. I right, get up. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's just that's our show for tonight, no. ladies and gentlemen. We've been an open forum. Um, yes, thank you. And all. I forgot thank to give you. out the phone number, so you didn't get a chance to call <laughs> in. But we had a we good time a just though. amongst ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yes. Beautiful time. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, e the Wolf. Yes, sir. Our official sponsor for tonight is? Uh, Green Crosses. Greencrosses.org. Give them a rousing round of applause for sponsoring our show. Yeah. All right, so we'll leave it at this. Until next time, be sure to tune in next week at your favorite time, 420 p.m. 420 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. East, West, North, South, however you get down. <laughs> however you get down. Um, be sure to join us once again here on the Marijologists. Yours truly, Richard Carr, signing off. You going to Wolf? Wolf. Good night and God bless Whitney everybody. Whitney Beatty, thank Janet you so Johnson, much. Janet Johnson, right. royalpurplehouse.com. All right. All right, good night, y'all. We'll see you next God time. God bless next week. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned.